Hello everybody and welcome back to Oxventure Presents Blades in the Dark. I'm Luke, the GM, and who are all these strangers? I can't remember who they are. Maybe everyone should introduce themselves and their characters. Sure. Well, I am Edvard Lumiere, the famous inventor. I invented the moustache. As you can see, I'm showing off the latest prototype. <laughs> Before this, everyone went around with chin strap beards. It was a dark time, but now it's better. Uh, I'm Barnaby the Butcher, Fortescue the uh, Third, and I've actually been quite badly behaved recently. That makes a change. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing specific, just generally, yeah. What does that mean? What have you done, Barnaby? <laughs> well, you know. What have you done? Which Before. rooms have you been in? We will find out, I'm sure. <laughs> I race out of the room to check my room. <laughs> I'm Casimir Jones, and you would not believe the morning I've had. We went out for brunch, didn't we, Casimir? <laughs> <laughs> with, I'm now right, old man, if you told me. Why don't you tell me? You, you wouldn't believe me help. if I told I just said you wouldn't believe me. I'm very credulous. <laughs> yeah, believe most right, things. Ah, well, I'm uh, Lilith Capellanaga, and I kind of just... I've just been sitting in a corner, just enjoying myself and my own company and just staying away from that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get an invite, got it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds chill. Mm. And I'm Zilla, and I've been doing chin-ups over in the corner there for the last several hours. <laughs> the last several months since you last saw us. <laughs> However long it's been, that's how long I've been mm. doing chin-ups. Stab that doctor corner. in the knee with a quill. Just put the bed up right. Just chin-ups. Just chin-ups. <laughs> mm. uh, well, we can get into how long it's been uh, in a moment, but first, I can tell you that it's been long enough that everyone is levelling up. Everybody is going to get two new dots to put in their attributes, and everybody gets to choose two new uh, special skills for their character type. Uh, and, and the gang is going to um, level up as well and get it, get one new ability. But um, but let's let's go let's go person to person. So quick can fire. I, can I uh, put all my points with... into jumping, and <laughs> my two skills can be kinds of jump, or is that not allowed? Star jumps and somersault. Sum see, it's a somersault or jump. Yeah, it's a kind of jump. As long as I'll you don't touch it. the ground while you're doing the somersault. I mean, it says here in the uh, GM cheat sheets to hold on lightly to the fiction, so I'm going to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Cool. Why don't we start, Lilith? Where are you putting your dots? For me, I'm putting one in prowl, so I can be a bit more sneaky, sneaky than I was previously. I've been torn between um, upping my finesse mm. or putting something in sway and seeing if I can all, you know Lilith is, you know, I'm quite a shy character but, you know hmm. Okay, and what are your two new special skills that you're learning? Uh, well, one is Tempest, where I can uh, push myself uh, and so summon like a stroke of lightning or a s storm of some kind. What? <laughs> <laughs> as you do you Damn. know this game is broken <laughs> i believe um i think i'm gonna go for uh there was two that i've torn between occultist and ritual which both sound really fun but i think in the end uh i'm going to uh go with ritual uh for you can study an occult ritual or create a new one uh, to summon a supernatural effect or being you know the arcane methods to perform a ritual uh to ritual to perform ritual sorcery you begin with one ritual already learned which i will reveal later on in the game so. excellent all right uh, let's do um barnaby next so obviously barnaby's main uh talents currently are in uh, sway and consort and things like that so what would be the most useful thing would be to put some dots elsewhere in maybe insight or prowess to create a more balanced character but that's not really Barnaby's style, so I'm going to add an extra dot to Sway, bringing that up to three, and an extra dot in Consort, bringing that up to two, please. Wow. Yeah. Okay, great. And totally, skills? Totally useless, Barnaby. Um, <laughs> so I get two special skills, do I? Well, yep. I would like to have uh, Rook's Gambit, which uh, allows me to take two stress to roll my best action rating while performing a different action. But I have to convincingly say how, the, I, how I adapt being able to using sway in you know things like fights and stuff. So sure. Great. we'll see how that works out. <laughs> convince them to go unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> convince them to punch themselves yeah. in the face. And uh, for the second one, I'm going to pick trust in me, which means I get a plus one d versus a target with whom I have an intimate relationship. Oh, okay. Because so most of Volusport. Barnaby gets about. <laughs> Let me tell you, Barnaby gets about. 
Barnaby Gets About is actually the title of this um, season. Trusted relationship. I wouldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. <laughs> not, not, not trusted and intimate, intimate mm, relationship. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I will be making full use of the flashback mechanic in this game. Good. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad to hear it, Edvard. We want more flashbacks, more pushing selves, more group actions, all the mechanics. Barnaby doesn't need to do any more flashing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so you do remember brunch? It's not just his back, he's flashing. <laughs> Let's do Casimir next. Uh, very straightforward, to be honest. Uh, both dots in hunt. You want someone finding there uh, and getting away from me anymore. And, uh, well, as uh, as you'll remember, I'm a spider, so I'm sort of about all about enabling other people to become better criminals, so my two special powers are foresight, so twice a score I can help someone else without taking any stress. And then I've taken functioning vice, so when I indulge my vice in downtime, I can adjust the die result up or down by one or two, and any ally who joins in my vice may do the same. So if anyone's mega stressed, all they need to do is sit down and clean my knee brace. And no, I don't. Fun. I don't think I'll be doing that. <laughs> no. no. All right, mate. Can you pick a more interesting vice, Casimir. Honestly. No. <laughs> you can get drunk and clean my knee brace. <laughs> no, still a hard pass, I think. Well, you probably clean it else. with some kind of industrial alcohol. It could be one for the brace, one for you. Seems like a terrible waste. Mm. Uh, Zilla. I have put two dots in command for a total of three dots in command because I want to tell people what to do. Um, <laughs> I've also gained the special ability Savage, which uh, when I unleash physical violence, it's especially frightening. When you command a frightened target, take 1D. So as you can see, it's a synergistic choice mm. of um, adding dice to my command, which is, as I remind you, are now three dot stat. Tremendous. I'm also taking not to be trifled with, with which I can push myself to do a feat of physical force that verges on the superhuman. So look out world. <laughs> All right, Zilla's superhuman now. Good. Game is broken. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last season was Dark Souls 3. This is the Elden Ring. Okay. <laughs> uh, Edvard. Yes. Uh, I will be taking an additional dot in Sway so that I can convince people to do things for me. It seems like it would be useful. And another dot in study, because I tend to do that a lot. I'm interested in the things that I see and I want to learn more about them. And my new special ability, I did consider uh, the one which allows me to choose a poison to which I become immune and push myself to secrete it through my skin or saliva or exhale it as a vapor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then I thought that would probably ruin, you know, social gatherings etc <laughs> so i'm just going to go with um saboteur which is uh, when i wreck the work is much quieter than it should be and the damage is hidden from casual inspection so i'm going to be sabotaging machinery cool. wait were we only picking one special no you do get two and for my second uh i am going to take analyst which is during downtime you get two ticks to distribute among any long-term project clocks that involve investigation or learning a new formula or design plan because I need to work on that WMM Mark II. Oh, ah, yeah, cool. Of course. So. Uh, right, have we done two dots and two skills for everyone? Mm hmm Well, as a gang of shadows, uh, the gang is also going to, going to gain one more special ability, and you have chosen the one called Everyone Steals. Each player character may add plus one action rating to Prowl, Finesse, or Tinker, up to a max rating of three. So if you already have three dots... In Prowl, Finesse, or Tinker, you uh, you can't choose them to add one to. So, everyone, make up your minds now where your dot is going. Mm -hmm. Tinker, please. Prowl. I shall have Finesse, please. I shall also have Finesse. Zilla. Prowl. Cool. Great. I, do, I mean, you, you're all keeping track of this, right? I'm not writing any of this down. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Oh. <laughs> right. Well, let's let's jump in, shall we? Uh, we rejoined the gang six months after Eleanor recruited you to her cause which I remind you, was finding out more about the gap in the world that she theorises is responsible both for magic leaving the world and the enormous preponderance of ghosts. Uh, Eleanor hypothesised this calamity was of human making and asked you to help her unmask those responsible, but after half a year of research and digging and discreet inquiries, you've hit a brick wall. Uh, if there's a secret society operating in Volusport, it's living up to the name. Uh, quite frankly, uh, so you're all frustrated. You need you need help, a trusted friend or a, 
a confidant perhaps, an expert in remaining hidden, or perhaps just a drinking buddy with a fresh set of eyes on the problem. <laughs> I can't believe you've all hit a brick wall. It's so frustrating. <laughs> well, what have you been doing, Barnaby, apart from drinking? Socialising. Is that separate yeah. from drinking? Not I mean, often. were you drinking while socialising? Yes. yes. Alright, then it's the same. But did anyone you socialise with are they part of any I mean you must be a member of tons of societies the skull and bones the old masons well yes it's the old fraternal societies isn't there yes yeah the fraternal um, order the shriners mm, yeah driving around in those little cars but I I didn't think to ask really you know they well, think think ask at the time <laughs> what's the most secretive secret society you remember of are there any kind of like cabals of business elites or anything mm. yes yes um we call ourselves the um, the Illuminati. It's sort of a joke. <laughs> um, I don't think it'll catch on, but you know, we set this thing up recently, just a bunch of drinking buddies. Um, the idea is really to, you know, control the world, maybe pull the strings, you know, but we're, at the moment it's just, it's three fellows really. It's me, Squiffy, and a couple of others. But um, yeah, yeah, it's not going well so far, but you know, it could catch on, you know, give it a couple of hundred years and we'll probably be running the show. <laughs> Have we ever said in, in canon that Squiffy's head is a pyramid with a single eye? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was assumed, mate. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I didn't want to draw attention to it. I thought he might be sensitive about He's it. He's very, very sensitive about it. Mm. Yes, no, no, um, yeah, Squiffy, uh, Squiffy and I have, uh, have been part of this little society for a couple of years now. But um, we really think it's got legs and, you know, pyramid heads with pyramid single heads. eyes. Sure, mm. sure. Well, is it Squiffy who you're, um, who you're bringing in to get this fresh set of eyes, or is there another? NPC. No, no, no. Squiffy's, uh, Squiffy's, Squiffy's the one, really. You know, he's the, uh, he's my, uh, my right hand man. He'd probably call me his right hand man. That's two right hand men. But then I guess, you know, if you're facing each other, your right hand is is their left. Hand. It's very confusing. But yes, probably Squiffy. Uh, you're explaining all this in a very sort of noisy but <laughs> fancy uh, members club. Um, mm -hmm. You are all there um, because Barnaby has a plus four to his um, VIP <laughs> entry. Um, and Squiffy, uh, Squiffy is sort of uh, lounging loosely. Mm. In a, what do you call? You know, like when it's a um, wing back. Chaise long. Yes, yeah. It's a it's a booth made up of chaise longe and mm. <laughs> fainting couches. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of and, fainting in here, actually. And you know. and you're ex you're explaining to Squiffy the 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 trouble that you've had, and he says, Ed, Ed. Ed um, wait, Edvard? No, he says. <laughs> he says, Edvard, yes. I like you much better than Barnaby. Hey, you're so snappily Squiffy. dressed. Oh, sure. Thank you. I'm you just this again. teasing Barnaby. Edvard, Barnaby can't take a joke. Yeah, I know. It's terrible, isn't it? Anyway, another drink, old man. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, um, you, you were saying that you've had a bit of a, a, a rough few months. Tell me all about it. Well, I mean, we're trying to work out this this little fix with the whole magic disappearing and the ghosts appearing. You know, we what? we've run up against a brick wall. These this lot here, studiers and tinkerers that they are, Edvard, haven't seemed to work it out yet. And I really, I, you know, I'm delegating as hard as I can. Huh. Well, I don't know what magic is, um, and it sounds awfully boring. Mm. Um, but. Uh... Well, I mean, it does... This was our best lead. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, he promised he was going to bring out the big guns. He said the first thing he did when he got in here was to lay his hands on a magnum. <laughs> <laughs> well, they didn't. They were out of Jeroboam's, dear boy. They were out of Jeroboam's. So. Is that some kind um, of sling? What is that? Uh, bottles. Bottles. Yeah. Uh, Squiffy sort of kicks his legs in, giggling in delight. When he laughs, he kicks his legs like a little baby. <laughs> um... <laughs> And you can hear a, a loud clinking uh, from the floor. And as you look under the table, you see the ground is littered with spent bottles, magnums, Jeroboams, mm -hmm. all the rest. And he says, um, I, I don't know if this is any help to you, but, um, uh, well, I remember that a long time ago I was having a, a terrible time with my gardeners. Mm. And I was trying to find a really, really good gardener. And so what I did was I... Um, well, I walked around all of the nicest gardens I could see and I asked everyone there, are you a good gardener? Will you come and work in my garden? Uh, and I didn't find any gardeners. There were just people walking around and enjoying their day with parasols and, and such. And that strikes me as being a little bit like what you, you've been trying to do. But wouldn't you know it, I, 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 I brought this problem to my mother and she said, why not simply 
advertise in the paper that you're looking for a gardener. So I tried that, and wouldn't you know it, several gardeners actually approached me, even though I was the one looking for a gardener. Is this dialogue NPC written, like, t- to be interrupted? I feel like so. <laughs> <laughs> You can skip through. Like, Rosex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you think, telling me, are you telling me <laughs> gardeners can read the newspapers? <laughs> well, I assume the gardeners have their own servants who... Read the. Ah, yeah, it makes much, more, yeah, much more. Much more. I assume sense, everyone yeah. has servants. Yeah. Um, and anyway, so all, in the end, the, the gardeners ended up coming to me. So um, well, the, the problem is, Squiffy, that yes. we're we're trying to sort of undertake a clandestine mission. Right. Yeah. So advertising it in the newspaper might not be the best way to remain clandestine. If you see what Interesting. I mean. Interesting. But it occurs to me that the clandestine uh, approach. Uh, hasn't really been working, has it? I say, mm. if you're not able to go to this secret society, make them come to you. Uh, and announce to the town what you're doing, just like you would with a newspaper advertisement. Uh, with, I don't, well, I don't know, what does your gang do? Crimes? Audacious crimes? Lovely mm. crimes. Yeah. Lovely crimes, mm. yeah. Lovely yeah, crimes. Exciting, Perhaps, lovely per- crimes. Maybe an audacious heist. Uh, something the whole town will be talking about. And it, when you do this audacious heist, maybe you, you know find some way of just confessing drop, dropping a message to those who you're looking for and saying hey we're here come to us i mean it's been ages since the last heist and i'm getting you know itchy feet so i'd be i'd be rather up for this well i'd love to help you with the heisting business but i must be going because i have to get dressed for the opera that's in town <laughs> mm. Mm. Ah. yes actually yes <laughs> i might do the opera instead of the heist well, uh, uh, Hang on a minute. You know how you can combine drinking and socialising? Yes. Yeah. Well, what if we combined a bit of lovely crime with a bit of lovely opera? Well, that sounds perfect, actually, doesn't it? We'll steal the opera. <laughs> <laughs> what is the opera that you're going to, Squiffy? Which one? Which Capital one idea. Oh, I uh, I don't really keep track of the names of them. Um, I'm mostly in the... Bar. I don't really like the music. It's loud. <laughs> um, hang on, I've got a leaflet. Uh, he sort of pats it on his pockets. Ah, here you go. And he, he shows you a uh, his, his ticket, which is attached to a flyer for the opera. It's called The Marriage of Lady Fienga. Hmm. Um, and uh, it is it is an opera that some of you will have heard of. It's a very famous um, opera. It's been performed uh, for well for for many many. Oh yeah, centuries. I remember that one. Yeah, famous. It's got that songs. bit that goes. How does it go? Uh, we like to party. We like we like to party. Mm. Mm. That's the that's the big aria in the. Is that the one where they go back to the island? We're going to Nizza. Yeah, you remember. Yes, you remember. yes, yes. That's, that's mm. right. beautiful. Transcend- transcendent. It's mm. a it's a beautiful and 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 famous opera. Mm. Uh, and as you look at this pamphlet, you see that the the title is kind of there, and it's all sort of an embossed gold lettering: "The Marriage of Lady Fienga." And uh, it, it looks beautiful, but there's more information in kind of big... You know those old ads that use all the fonts? Mm. Yes. That's what you're getting here. Uh, it advertises that uh, in this wonderful run, Lady Fienge, the soprano, is to be played by Emmeline Morlan, Volisport's most celebrated soprano, and the resplendent Ruby of Mistmeyer, which some of you will know if you study the opera, is a key item uh, in the plot of, the, of mm. this particular narrative will be a real gem on loan from the treasury of the city council mm. wow it that seems like a, the opera yeah it seems like a terrible mistake to mention that in the advertising really it's almost like inviting people to come and steal the gem well of course it presupposes that all of the criminals in the city have servants with which to have this leaf who are read reading to this them. out to them yeah. do they not do they, they not I've spent six months, mate, trying to explain this to you. They do right. Not. It was it was no, it was a no, was it? It right. was a no. Gosh. The first. I'll time. commit it to memory. Yeah, yeah. I'll commit it to memory. Mm. <laughs> um, as you take another drink, mm. um, Barnaby, something else is erased from your memory. <laughs> um, <laughs> this time, it's how to how to hold your breath underwater. <laughs> <laughs> just no. <laughs> That's too good. It's let me canon. Just, Barnaby let me can't just hold his breath that. underwater. <laughs> We just note that down on the character sheet. Yeah, yeah. Can't hold his breath underwater now. <laughs> All right, I bang the table and I shout, "We must steal the ruby of Miss Meyer!" At the top of my voice. The the gauntlet has been thrown down. Turns out that Squiffy, against all odds, has had quite a good idea and is now uh, sort of falling asleep. Classic Squiffy. 
Uh, classic it, Squiffy. It's classic Squiffy. The big opera is in town. Uh, you want to be stealing, well, heisting this gem is the plan. Mm-hmm. I mean, there um, was a lot of prepared backstory for it, so it seems like that's... Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to do something else. <laughs> would, I mean, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> Just make the prepared. opera about bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, I should like put ghosts in and make it Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a sort of like the, the B version is just a kind of all the instruments it's just kind the of the B drawing. side. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So <clears throat> the gauntlet is thrown down. You can do whatever you like, but a large heist somehow leave your calling card that will get the attention of those you want to But not the police. <laughs> This is the challenge. Mm. Enter planning phase. So the gem will be used in the production. Mm-hmm. It will be presumably stored somewhere when it isn't on stage. Mm-hmm. We could maybe engineer some kind of switcheroo scenario. Create a fake Seems gem sensible. out of paste. Yeah. Something like that. Wouldn't or too... we could get cast as members of the chorus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it would be good to have people backstage. Well, mm. I'm... I think it w- it would be good to have people definitely backstage and then like at least but I mean I'm thinking Barnaby maybe to go to the actual opera. Keep yes, an eye I'm on more of a I'm a more more of a front of the house sort mm-hmm. of you know person than yeah you don't behind. belong stage. Well, I was in a few uh, theatrical productions at uh, at the Academy. I think I could probably carry off any of the roles, Lady Fienge, for example. <laughs> Wonder if they haven't cast her yet. Well, they have cast Lady Fienge as uh, to be played by Emily oh, yes, Morland, Velasport's most celebrated soprano. But, mm. but you know, maybe... don't let that hold. Don't let that hold you back. Uh, you know, everything is. Maybe she needs an understudy. Quite possibly. Mm. Mm. I was also wondering if maybe they need stagehands. You know, shifting the scenery about, moving things around quietly and with great strength. You know, taking out what needs to be taken out in order for the opera to proceed. If you catch my meaning. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like we've got um, Casimir uh, as a stagehand. I think probably if someone's a celebrated uh, singer in Vola Sport, I've probably been to a few parties with them. So um, I think I'll work on you know talking to Emily mm. about maybe where the gem might be at any given moment during the. I play. could probably I could probably get a job um, in the technical department, working the sort of the lights and things like that. I think I could probably manage that. Machinery, that's my sort of thing. Cool, mm. cool. Yeah, that sounds good. We can cover all this off with a few rolls in a minute, but I like it. So, Barnaby, your prep for this heist, if you like, is getting to know Emily Morland. Yes. Edvard, you're looking to get hired as a, a in the lighting crew. team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kazmir, you're looking to similarly get hired, but in, in a sort of backstage capacity. Well, I mean, my plan was just to slip in the back. But oh, yep, cool. That's fine. That also yep. works. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Lilith and Zilla, what are you thinking? I'm a bit out of my element. I don't really know anything about operas. You're good at kicking. You could be in the in the kick line. Why don't we team up? <laughs> yeah. They have a kick line yeah. in the opera, right? Yeah, they have sandbags, right? Sandbags are a thing yeah. in theatre. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, They're yeah, heavy. Yeah. I can lift them. Maybe I can deliver. I can pose mm-hmm. as a sandbag delivery man, woman. There we go. I personally would like to be one of those people that's all in black that like holds thing up things up as if that they're not actually there and does all the special effects on stage <laughs> in a very arty manner. Of well, there's a, there's a few of them. That's a pretty important job, actually, in mm-hmm. the marriage of Lady Fienge. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll need to uh, create a replica of the gem if we're going to try and switch them. Do we have a... Do, is there a picture in the newspaper? Yes, there is. A large, prominent one. It's a huge ruby. Uh, it's cut into a sort of geometric shape that is not Unusual. What's unusual about this ruby is its striking size and brilliant clarity. Big and red. Mm. <laughs> you can make us a big and red stone. Yeah, I could probably do that. You it's got uh, chemicals and got stuff. our chemical preparations up here. Yeah. Probably do that. If Keep we leave a perfect replica and no one notices that the ruby is missing, oh, in yeah. what way will we attract the attention of a secret society? If the crime goes unnoticed. Maybe I, I could create something. It dissolves over a period of several days with a there calling card in the middle. It, yeah. yeah. Um, maybe some kind of pink or orange salt. Like uh, uh, so, like there's a particular rock salt that is found from these mountains. 
uh, uh, like east of where I, I grew up, and it has this lovely red hue to it, and it's quite fancy and is used for like curing all sorts of meats. Imagine, you know, the the ruby there, and then someone spills water on it, a magical person all in black, <laughs> and then <gasps> the ruby is gone. Well, if it's a few days later, though, then then we'd be well away, mm. and there would just be our calling card in the middle. Mm, could be, but I do like the doing it on stage and everyone. You want to walk up and spill water on it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd in be front like of a... the whole opera. <laughs> but I'd be in all in black. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be there. Effectively invisible. <laughs> I like this plan. Yeah, all in black, but <laughs> crucially not invisible. <laughs> 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 You do it on a blackout stage with a spotlight. (laughs) That's true. The audience will be under the theatrical spell. (laughs) And you will be working in the lighting department. I'm just saying. Exactly. (laughs) It's that or we lead a horse onto the stage and wait for it to lick the card clean. (laughs) (laughs) Look, the horse is doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see where he's going with this. The action of many, many hands over several days will cause it to erode to the point where it breaks. Okay, this is... Sounding up like we're shaping into a plan. Do we? Are we more keen on plan dissolve with water, or more keen on plan <laughs> dissolve over several days, leaving calling card in the middle? That sounds like the remaining sticking point. Mm. I vote for that one. The second one. Either either works for me, really. To be honest. Um, I think. I think either either way, we replace it with something that dissolves, and it's you know we'll test the temperature of the room see how everyone's enjoying the opera and where you know and then if we think oh we think she would go for a subtle one the calling card is left in like for later on sure. otherwise the calling card is revealed immediately hurry hurry we we'll, we can hurry along the reaction if we see fit mm-hmm. my only concern is how's the council going to react to this if nobody knows that the jewel's been switched out then they can just hush it up will they still come calling or will they just let it lie in order to prevent a scandal? Whereas, if all the tongues in Volusport are wagging about this, do they have any option other than to investigate? Mm-hmm. Could be right mm. there. So maybe instead of a calling card, it should be some fireworks that spell out our name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we make what they call in the theatre business a scene. <laughs> we, if, yeah, if it was some sort of made of some chemical compound that reacted with water mm. then we could have this the stumbling invisible woman drop water on it mm-hmm. <laughs> well and perhaps become... this is a perhaps this is a good point to uh, mention that um in act three as who's familiar with the, the hands up if you know this oh opera. of course you mean the famous scene in act three where the uh the water bearer the, Trip, the ruby trips is, over and yeah 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 the the ruby is a uh, it's throw the ruby's thrown into the stream and captain shattershield dives in to retrieve it but his heavy armor causes him to sink yeah um <laughs> and it's one of the final acts of the, the it, it's the, it's the La- final... lady fienge has to choose between the ruby and the, the <laughs> uh, uh, gallant the yeah. gallant captain and she exactly. chooses well, he's the, the one who she needs to pay for her who, wedding to the other guy he's the <laughs> one who gave it to her as a, as a yeah. symbol because he thinks he can buy her love yeah, exactly. Mm. But and of course, he is... sinks to the bottom under his his ostentatious plate armor exactly. that he won't take off because he thinks it makes him look handsome. And he, exactly. he he can't buy her love. Is that is that really how it goes? He he thinks he thinks doesn't he can't sound buy very. Her, but her heart sound... belongs to the to the to the young to the young page. High of doesn't voice sound and very realistic book. because presumably yeah. the page is quite quite poor. Oh, so Chauncey, in... yeah, he's he's very he's very poor. He's always um, in dressed in rags of... in, mm. in most most portrayals. Yes, this is my problem with the opera. It's not realistic at all. No. Mm. So yeah, so there, crucially though, it, at the end of the thing, the the ruby is cast into into the stream mm-hmm. by Lady Fienge. So perfect. All right, so we'll have it emit. To, how, how will it? What can we do to make it clear it's us to the secret society, but also not have us all get in loads of trouble. Any ideas? What's the name? Wait, wait, what's the name of our gang again? I know, obviously, but you will say it. Yeah, I, don't think you <laughs> I don't think you've named the gang, but maybe now's no, the time. No, we're, we're oh. with the, the hobby horses or something. Oh, yeah, the hobby we? horses. Yeah. Thank mm. you. Have we, we ever said that? 
I don't know. I okay, don't know if we have. you are now officially named the Hobby Horses. Oh man! <laughs> a loving reference to the to the to the to the swinging sort of rocking horse sign above the antique shop in season one, which if we didn't mention it was. I'm there. pretty sure it was a thing. <laughs> if we <laughs> it was... said it, what? Where would we have said it except while playing Blades in the Dark? I, t- I honestly <laughs> don't know. In case we never said it, as you all know. The gang is called the Hobby Horses. That's all right. That's, what about if that. we have a big thing that comes down over the stage that says you have been punked by the <laughs> Hobby Horses officially? Uh, or what if I put a spirit <laughs> bottle in the middle of the fake ruby and it a ghost in the open, shape of a Hobby and a Horse ghost comes out and a ghost comes out and then the card comes down and says you've, you've been punked, punked by you the have Hobby, been punked <laughs> hobby <laughs> Horses. Uh, and we're banking on the police not knowing who the Hobby Horses are. Like yes. the secret society having Correct. ways and means to figure yeah, it out. to figure it out, yeah. Because they're hooked into the underworld, unlike the police. And the police are useless. All right. How about with regards your neighbours? P.S. Punked. <laughs> You'll have all of Volusport trying to figure out what the word punked means. <laughs> I'm trying to make it a thing. Come on. Come on, folks. <laughs> it's really got okay. legs. Punked. To clarify the plan, let me make sure. Stop me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Zilla, Casimir, you want to sneak in the back and be stagehands. Edvard, you want to get recruited legitimately to the technical to, crew. To the technical crew. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lilith, you want to be recruited legitimately. Um, I'm going to try and swap places with someone already in the show by encouraging them to go to a union meeting. <laughs> sure. Not sure, this cool. again. <laughs> During the performance. Bloody hell. One of those union meetings that takes We really shouldn't be encouraging this, <laughs> you know. The, the union really shouldn't schedule it during the opera, that is. <laughs> and Barnaby, you are going to be at the opera, mm. um, but you want to patron. have, in the intervening time, have uh, sort of got to know the, the soprano. Yes, um, I'll ask around for an introduction. Okay, great. Um, and the plan is to uh, steal the ruby, the ruby of Miss Meyer, and replace it with a fake that, on Contains. contact with water, will yes. dissolve and release a ghost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And the ghost will do something cool, Lilith, yep. please. The ghost okay. will do something cool <laughs> that Lilith can figure out at the time with flashbacks, I'm sure. Okay. Right. Do they tend to be cooperative, these ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, okay. Right. That's a hell of a plan. I love it. Daring and audacious, I'd say. I'd say it's extremely audacious. Okay, uh, let's have a look at... Let's let's try and crunch the engagement roll for this. Okay, 1D for sheer luck. Particularly bold or daring. Absolutely. Yes. Always. Is it overly complex? No. We've made no. it overly no. complex. No. It's as simple as can be. <laughs> it's as simple as can be. Don't in fact, I just summed it up in the one second. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm getting a job. Uh, does it expose a vulnerability or hit them with their weakest? Yes. Does it? Backstage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> uh, particular defenses or preparations. Uh, that would be my. No, I don't think that applies. Uh, can friends or contact provide aid? Yes. We're hoping so. Squiffy. Mm. That's wow. the plan. The soprano. Um, are enemies or rivals involved? No. Are there any other elements to consider? I don't Barnaby so. might start drinking. And he, might, he might not stop. All I mean, he hasn't stopped for the last six months, so I don't, true, think, I don't think he will not stop. Not really an impediment, drinking. is it, actually? Yeah. Barnaby mm. will continue drinking, <laughs> Yeah, is what will happen. Yeah. Well, that gets us up to a gigantic four, and I think we're going to add f- a fifth for the uh, second story perk that the gang has, right? Five mm-hmm. ones, baby. Here we go. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's five. Here we go. We've got a one. We've got... Another one. <laughs> We've got a three. Okay. Yay. We've got a three. Yay. And we got a five. Yay. Yay. Okay. All right. Brilliant. Okay. So there is some complication. Okay. Here's how this went. Barnaby, yes. uh, you did in fact secure an introduction uh, to the soprano. Emily. Whose name is like Emily. twenty pages away from where I'm looking now? Emily Morland. Emily Morland. Emily. Emmeline. Emmeline. Okay. There's your complication. <laughs> There's your, your, complica- complication. your complication, Barnaby. Is well, two complications. One, you can't for the life of you remember her name. <laughs> and two, um, what happened at this introduction? I spilled a drink on her very very fine fur coat. Okay. 
Sure. Um, despite that, it went real well, and Emmeline is really sweet on you, Barnaby. Whoa. Like marvelous, real sweet. Mm. Apart from that, however, Edvard, mm. uh, you wrote a very polite and, and well-written letter to the um, to, to, to the opera. Um, you listed some of your interventions and some of your achievements. Uh, you had a meeting with the head of the lighting uh, department, who was extremely impressed by your acumen, uh, and you were in fact recruited to the lighting team. And you have been uh, you have been run through all of the major cues uh, for Acts One, Two, and Three, of course. And at the beginning of the evening, uh, we find you behind a row of electric mm. uh, lamps uh, and a large humming board with a lot of big pulleys and switches on it like thing yeah exciting exactly that could that control all of the lights how did how did my attempts to make a fake gem go oh yeah um th- they went great they went great let's talk about where it is in a minute but it looks it looks flawless just like the just like the pictures you you made it out of various alchemicals and the salts that Lilith mentioned and mm-hmm. all of your tests you obviously you haven't dissolved this one all of the ones you tested dissolved just right so that's great. Lilith, yes, you got into... You are now currently head-to-toe in black. Uh, in black For sort a of, change. In, <laughs> yeah, in black. a colourful wardrobe. <laughs> exactly, but then, like everything is covered. The face is covered. There's a kind of fine mesh that just sort of just covers your eyes. Uh, you're currently hanging out backstage with about 20 other people, all dressed exactly the same. Some of them are kind of pacing around. Some of them are kind of stretching. Yeah, doing warm-ups. Uh, what's the name of the one you've replaced? Celia. Celia, cool. She was a terrible impact on morale of the rest of the, the cast, to be honest. She was breaking her confidence daily. Good thing she's gone. <laughs> no one's going to miss her. Scab! I shall. Let's see. Casimir and Zilla, you did manage to sneak in to the opera. Yes. Uh, as people were filing into the front in their finery, yes. you managed to duck into a... Um, uh, a sort of loading bay at the back behind the stage there's obviously a gigantic space where all of the sets mm-hmm. are and various kind of warrens and tunnels so Casimir you had you had no trouble sort of following your nose in a thiefly way and getting you and Zilla up and backstage so we'll just say that you are backstage at the moment can we also say I've acquired us each a flat cap yeah you've each got a flat cap Zilla um, do you want Drab olive or sort of canvas grey. Do you have a khaki of some sort, like a sandy? Absolutely, yes. Sandy beigey khaki. All right, I have two large sandbags that I snuck in with me, one over Great. each arm. I don't have know anything here. about the theatre except I once heard there were sandbags, and that was the only <laughs> the only detail that stuck. And so I figure if I bring sandbags, that's my cover. Great. Uh, as a bonus, I'll say that as you were sneaking in. Um, you actually got a pretty good look at the kind of back stage of, of this opera situation. So you're pretty familiar with the layout. You've kind of made a mental map of the, of the, of the way around the building. You also spotted uh, a large number of security members. Casimir, uh, they're not blue coats, which are the police as a reminder in Volusport, but you have a strong suspicion that they're all X, X blue coats. Uh, it's a retinue of security on loan from the city council uh, and you strongly suspect that they are there because this opera features a very famous and beautiful gem. So are they visibly have... guarding a box that might contain the gem? Uh, you can't see that at this point. You haven't seen the ruby or, or the gem or anything. You, you've just arrived backstage and you've noticed that there's a lot of security around. So mm. let's say that for now. I've been working here for a little while, right? Yeah. So I I probably have become ambiently aware of where the gem is being stored, you would think. Or have you? This isn't your first night um, working. Okay. Well, I tell you what, you probably would have a, a rundown, wouldn't you, of where... Um... They probably used a dummy in rehearsals. It was probably a big chunk of coal. Um, yeah, that's that could be true. Make me a roll for, um, for how much of this you're able to find out. Uh, okay, I'll do a study roll. Cool. So... Uh, two and a four. Okay. Um, you were able... To... Nobody tells the lighting team about the whereabouts of the ruby, partly for security reasons and partly because why would the lighting team need to know? There's only one... There's only a few points where you know exactly where the ruby will be and that's because you need to shine a light on it to make it sh- to make it reflect its most brilliance. 
dazzling sure. yeah. qualities. Those points are when it is first seen in uh, Act 1, when Captain Shattershield produces it as a token of his love for Lady Fienge. Mm -hmm. And then uh, again in Act 3, when it is thrown into the water. Apart from that, it is worn once it is introduced and until it is thrown, it is worn around the neck on a, ne on a necklace by the, um, by the soprano. Right. How big is it, by the way? Do we know? Could could we tell from the poster? Um, it's about a baby's fist. Hmm. Okay. Big, but not comically large to be worn yeah. around an opera singer's <laughs> yeah, throat. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Big enough that you can see it from the cheap seats, and be right. amazed by its <laughs> glimmeringness. Not large enough that it's going to like break the neck of the mm. soprano who's that wearing it. Knowing that Casimir and um, Zilla are sneaking in because I'm appraised of the plan, um, I'd like to wander around backstage looking out looking out for them yeah sure um let's say that it's uh 10 minutes to 10 minutes to curtain so yeah i'm just gonna wander around see if i can find them because i know they should be around here somewhere as yeah. well as uh as well as lilith make me roll for this just because i'm imagining all of the lighting stuff is going to be quite f like basically on the other side of a huge space mm. because obviously all the lights are kind of from this side uh lighting tech you'll be up like facing the stage or is everyone else? Oh, of course, the lighting it? booth is on the other side, of mm. the, not the backstage, right? Mm. Yeah, so I will need to leave soon to work the lights properly. Yeah. Um, who's, okay. who's carrying the rock? Who's carrying our version of the stone? Great Did we all leave the rock at home? <laughs> no, I have, oh, no. I, have, I, have the, I have the rock. I have the rock. I have the rock. Cool. Okay. All right. I'm going to yeah, study roll to see if I can find them. That is a six and a two. Yes, you kind of slip away from the lighting booth. You've been laying the groundwork for this by telling stories about your un uncomfortable bowel situation for several days to your like lighting colleagues. That's all they know about you. You've only been on the job for four days. It's all, yeah. it's all you go on about. So they are not surprised and frankly a little relieved when you slip away to make one of your... Whoa, fellas, it's, it's a bad one. <laughs> I'll be back before curtain up, though, don't you worry. I can I feel it a-bubbling, you say, and you sort of slip slip away and make your way... I suppose you're quite well-dressed always, so it's not immediately obvious that you're not uh, a punter. Make your way through the opera, uh, nodding politely at the, the many sort of security. Yeah, flash my ID. Exactly. Uh, you enter a backstage area and follow some uh, passages that lead you up to the vast space in the back where you notice Casimir is there and Zilla, who is holding two huge sandbags. And looking I'm making <laughs> a, a small stack with them. Yeah. And then un unmaking the stack and putting them back on my shoulder. <laughs> yeah. And then Zilla doing it again in the hope that if anyone observes me for one or two seconds, it will look like I'm working. But in mm. fact, I'm in a loop of... <laughs> Make, in, make, make in, a two sandbag pile of sandbags and then a one pile, <laughs> pile bag of sandbags and then back up here. You're doing it so convincingly, Zilla, that actually a few other uh, idlers <laughs> who, who like appear like they are trying to look busy have, yeah. have started yeah, about time. adding sandbags. sandbags. And, yeah. So it's actually quite a sizable wall that you're <laughs> building and taking. I have no idea what sandbags are for at the opera. Zilla, are these my sandbags from my... My laboratory. We, yeah, we have I sandbags mean, I thought here. They were everybody's sandbags. Communal well, yeah, sandbags. You're fine. You're fine to use them, but we have them. You didn't need to bring sandbags. We have mm. sandbags. <sighs> anyway, the point. It's not important. The point is, I have the gem. So who's who? Someone needs to take it because I'm going to be up in the lighting booth. Oh right. Okay. Well, it's probably um. That's probably one for old ghosty. All right. Well, you need to find her then. <laughs> She's right behind you. Hello. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I couldn't I just, see you. You're all dressed in black. That's the point. It's the perfect disguise. It's completely indistinguishable. My God, it's incredible. The magic of the theatre, I say. Um, all right, I'll hand the uh, the gem to Lilith, and mm -hmm. then I'll pass on the information to all three of them about the times that the gem will be on stage. So the uh, Act One, and then around the neck, and then Act Three for the the throwing in the in the river. Okay. Mm -hmm. Question from the GM. Lilith, we've established that you are wearing a skin-tight, all-black mm -hmm. uh, cotton mm -hmm. thing. Where is the gem going? <laughs> in, in, at like just, just here. In, it, there in is mouth? space. No, 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 no. They're like <laughs> dissolve just... and a ghost goes up. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like them, them. <laughs> like eating a bath bomb. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have like um, around here. I have like a little extra pouch that I've sewn in. 
that kind of goes there so it doesn't immediately like stick out on my costume yeah we never said it was skin tight nah. that's on you luke we said it was all black i think what we're all picturing when we it's have like the description the of we right. were all familiar with this role in the theatre mm-hmm. and it's not like yeah. baggy. I was thinking of like a Nazgul. <laughs> <laughs> that it's is quite like... Vomus port, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. like, it's not like wizard's cape. It's not like... <laughs> um, okay, I'll tell yeah, you what. I wouldn't be doing my job, Lilith, if I didn't ask you to roll to see how good your... Flashback. Okay, here we go. I sewed a little pocket into her thing. Well, I, I just said I did. Flashback to before your flashback. I had already made the pouch. And I said no thank you to your pouch. Flashback before the flashback. flashback. It's It's been a while. I forgot to say flashback. But my father was the one who popularised neck pouches in all uh, morph suits. (laughs) That's what made our family name. That's why I grew up dirt poor. (laughs) Flashback, I watched all this with massive amusement. <laughs> the Jones pouch, they call it. Whoever actually did the flashback, take one stress. I'm going to say it's everyone. Apart from <laughs> no! Joke flashbacks is no stress. <laughs> That's fair. Take the stress, but yeah, it looks great. It is, it yeah. is well concealed. Um, yeah. It's a, you know, barring disaster, that, that gem is not going to be spotted. So no need to roll for that again, I think. But Barnaby, what's happening with you right now? I'm in the VIP bar, obviously. Who's here? Uh, Squiffy, well, I mean, presumably, of, but anyone else? Yeah, Squiffy. Squiffy's here. Um, all of Volisport's most uh, wealthy and idle, uh, <laughs> as, you know, sort of loafing around, looking mostly bored. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, chatting, making small talk. Uh, someone, someone is going to approach you, um, uh, Barnaby, a, a, a young man uh, mm-hmm. with a clipboard, actually, and, and is going to say, um, Mister. Uh, is it Mr. Barnaby? Yes. Fortescue. Mr. Fortescue to you, actually. The third. Uh, yes. Sorry, sir. Sorry, Mr. Fortescue. Yep. Sorry, sir. I've, uh, I, I, I have a message uh, from, from, um, from, from, from Ms. Morlan, mm. uh, whose assistant I, I have the honour to be. Uh, she would be um, uh, very much honoured if, if you would be willing to uh, join her uh, for a drink uh, backstage after the show. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'd love to, to swing by at the interval, really, and just, you know... Say hello. At the interval, my goodness. Um, I, I, I will certainly ask Miss Morland. Um, mm. uh, she, she tends to remain quite, quite ruthlessly in character through the interval. Uh, she's so dedicated to her craft. I can only hope to learn from her excellence. <laughs> of course, yeah. Unfortunately, I can't sing at all, Barnaby. Can I call you Barnaby? No, you can't actually. No, uh, Mr. Fortescue will do. Um. Yes, well, I, I, I mean, I, that's all understood, but I really think um, actually the interval would be a lovely, lovely time to pop by and, you know, compliment her on her performance. Um, I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Yeah. You're, oh, you're one of Ms. Morland's caller who wishes to pop by and compliment her on her performance. I Correct, get, yes. I get mm. it. Mm. I get it, Barnaby. Um, Ms., Mr. Fortescue, sorry. And he hurries away uh, to make that request of Ms. Morland, presumably. Cool. I go back to drinking with Squiffy. And then I said to him, what you should do is just try being extremely wealthy. It solves all sorts of problems. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. I was quite phased out, Barnaby. What were you saying? Just, uh, just, uh, it's more advice for life for this chap. But, uh, you know, he didn't seem to take it. Still absolutely poverty stricken. People don't listen. I know. You know, if they just listen, it's, just it's, listen. it's a lot, you know, it, it, they just need to try a little bit harder to be a little more wealthy. I think that they'd find life a lot easier. Yes, yes, yes. Has the opera finished yet? It hasn't even started, Squiffy. Uh, Come on, but there's time for one more drink. Of course there is, and I go to the bar. You're on your way to the bar, Barnaby, um, Mm -hmm. when all of a sudden the barman does something that you have not encountered before, uh, which is to look at Refuses me a drink. (laughs) And and make a quiet gesture as if to say, no more drinks at the moment now, because... um, uh, because, because the performance is starting. Uh, um, and he points to a sign behind the bar that says no loudly shouting about drinks during the performance. And indeed, the orchestra begins to tune up. And a hush descends. I take, uh, I use one of my three light load to um, pop out oh, my hip flask load. and fill my own glass. Yep, fine. We didn't do load, did we? Uh, normal. Light. Barnaby, normal. I have to be light. <laughs> yeah, you're you're gonna be light. Extremely um, light. Lilith, of course. Heavy for Zilla. Edvard, however much you're doing, just tick off one for the gem. Okay. 
Okay, brilliant. Yes, and the, the, the curtain goes down. Uh, a hush descends. Up in the uh, lighting booth, Edvard, suddenly everyone is uh, very busy concentrating on their cue sheets. Um, mm. uh, they are ready, as are you, uh, by some enormous um, uh, sort of levers ready to... Ready to uh, bang on the first limelight. Never happier when, than when throwing a giant lever to make exactly. something sparky happen. Exactly. Only, <laughs> the only problem is is that you have been told a few times that you're not allowed to shout, it's alive! When you call this one, is... I can do it in my mind. <laughs> exactly. Can't stop me doing that. They can't stop you doing it in your mind. As the overture begins, uh, the audience falls to a, 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 a total respectful hush. Meanwhile, backstage, suddenly things are a hive of activity. Uh, people are rushing around. Um, people are uh, sort of running to either sides of great big wooden bits of, of set, Casimir uh, and Zilla. And actually, mm. it suddenly looks like everyone is in a position. And actually, a few of them are looking at you going, huh, what are they? What are you Sandbag one, sandbag two, sandbag two, sandbag one. <laughs> Someone with a clipboard is rushing round Zilla, uh, and and they come up to you, um, and they go, sandbags. Are these the sand- which yeah, act are the sandbags for? All of them, of course. All right. You can't have any of the acts without sandbags. Okay. Where are uh, I, I just arri- I'm I'm here delivering them. Where do you need the sandbags? Uh, where do I, um, oh gosh, I should have. Jerry. <laughs> He can't hear me. <laughs> can, I, can I cut in yes. at this point and be like, I know, sorry, um, sandbags are my role, but obviously, you know, I point at my own leg and I say, carrying them's a little bit uh, beyond me these days, but uh, I am, let me tell you, Volusport's most premier sandbag deliverer and placer. This is my uh-huh, assistant. Uh-huh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, don't worry, I know exactly where we need to be. I'm just going to nip round there. We just need to brace the, uh, the main stand for the first scene change, because, of course... Uh, it's, it's been a it's been a little bit yeah. wobbly, but uh, there hasn't been time to fix it, so we're just going to counterbalance it. All right, uh, Mason. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't I don't see any of that here, but fine. Just make sure that it's out of the way of the trees. And she points to some giant wooden painted two D trees. Absolutely. Yep. Trees don't need to be braced until the second act, mate. It's all up here, and uh, and the sandbags. It's all it's all over there. We'll be scuttling about, but don't you pay us any mind. All right. Thank God someone's paying attention. Um. That was so good. There's no rolling necessary. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, the, the the show begins. Act one commences, and um, uh, Barnaby, you're probably the one with the best actual view of the of the yes, show. Yes, I'm in the box. Uh, in one yeah, of the boxes. In, in the box. Yeah. box of wine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you box you watch wine. the action unfold. Lady Fienger's mm. omnibus breaks down outside mm. of Mistmire. Uh, the young paladin page. Uh, helps to repair the wheels of steel, uh, and as the, the arias and the as, and the, the overture finishes and blending into the, these beautiful opening uh, sort of musical movements, suddenly Lilith, uh, someone gives you a shove on the back. <laughs> Celia, is it Celia? Yeah, it's you. Go. It's you. Okay. Go. I go. I run out onto the stage. <laughs> cool. You run out onto the stage. You are hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> You're sort of in the kind of back in the in in the kind of <laughs> shadows. You notice that several other people in uh, in kind of shadows are all sort of crouched around some big wagon wheels, right? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of on the side of this large. The omnibus is is mm. is just two D, but the wheels kind of attach onto the onto the the front of it, mm-hmm. uh, and they look they're made of wood and they look real heavy and. At each wheel, uh, there are two people in shadow waiting, ready to uh, sort of lift them up a little bit. But okay. one of the wheels is missing one person. Okay, well, like I go and join that person. You can't tell exactly that there's like a deep frown from the other person because of the sort of... But you could... There's just a slight furrowing here <laughs> of the fabric and you just hear it ever such a subtle... Dismissive tut. I'm sorry, my my zip got stuck. Shh. <laughs> I can't hear me. Okay. <laughs> I just look at them. I'm just I'm always looking at them to see where I need to be. Good. 
uh, yeah, the um, uh, you're you're sort of crouched there for for quite some time uh, until the young man who is who is playing the young the young paladin page starts singing his um, line. You you can't really follow the singing because it's in an an old old language, but you're sort of getting from the gestures and from having read the booklet beforehand, like the the show program that he's about to help repair the wheels of steel, and he walks over to the um, uh, to the to the omnibus and sings for several minutes th- about some and you think the meaning is and now I will help lift these wheels for despite my diminutive stature and high voice <laughs> <laughs> I intend to help and he goes like that I lift the wheel with the other person <laughs> cool make me a roll for this it's quite heavy <laughs> oh I lean over to Squiffy and say, you know, it's not often that the male lead has a higher voice than the female lead, but I like what they've done here. It's very, very Ooh, novel. okay. I got four and a five. I went for a finesse, if that's right. Yep, yep, that yep. sounds reasonable to me. Uh, yeah, yeah, you um, you do you do sort of hoist the wheel up uh, and sort of affix it to the side of the omnibus with a, with a kind of satisfying ka-chunk. Yeah. However... It doesn't look as good as it could have. Every all the other wheels, it's like the three of these wheels go like, in, and then a minute, like a few seconds later, it's gone. <laughs> the other one gets there, uh, and it ever so slightly uh, throws the, um, the the performer playing uh, the young page off of uh, off of his stride, and he does kind of shoot you a surprise look. I'll start a clock. Um, I look at fired. I look at the person next to me, and I just quietly shake my head <laughs> as if it's their fault nice okay uh, I'll start a clock with five pieces uh, and it's called Lilith gets rumbled <laughs> I'll tick one piece of it okay however you do manage to roughly get the the, the wheel on and you sort of take a cue from everyone else Lilith and, and scamper off when all of the other uh, mm-hmm. like shadow puppeteers <laughs> <laughs> also scamper off right Edvard uh, you have an important lighting cue coming up and it is the first time uh, that the ruby of Mistmire um, I- I- is seen when um, Captain Shattershield head of the order of Le Dragon d'Or uh, is-, is going to present it to Lady Fienge as a token of his, um, of his, of his, of his love so how's that going to play out? Let's have uh, you see you see you see the captain stride onto onto stage. Uh, he's sort of in a wearing a fairly elaborate dragon costume. It's kind of sort of dirty yellow in color and kind of has like papier mache scales. It looks quite low rent actually for, for a production of this. <laughs> Sounds pretty high quality to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Edvard, you get a you you realize that everyone else on the lighting desk is kind of is looking at you. You have to um uh, you are responsible for firing this light onto mm. the ruby at the exact right moment. Okay, so and that moment is now, I assume, so I do that. Cool. Uh, tell me how you do it. Uh, there's a big switch that says ruby spotlight. I labelled them earlier, so I could use... Smart. Yeah, so that I could uh, refer to them at a moment's notice, and then with a theatrical flourish, I grab the handle, and then in my mind, I scream, It's alive! <laughs> and I throw the, <laughs> the switch... Cool. Um, yeah, make me a roll, but from a controlled position because the labelling them beforehand was such a good idea. So, mm. yeah. Okay, so I guess is it? It's, I think it's a tinker, right? Because it's technical. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, three, four, five. Cool. Yep. Yeah, the um, the uh, that's a complication, but from a controlled position, it's it's so minor. The light shines on brilliantly, and um, let's see, Edvard. <laughs> And Barnaby, from mm-hmm. facing the stage, you get your first look at the Ruby of Mistmire, and it is indeed absolutely glorious. As the light from Edvard's spotlight hits it, um, it is reflected off through the ruby, and it, and it dances brilliantly all around. There is an audible, uh, ooh, from the room. It's kind of stunt casting the mm. ruby, to mm. be honest. A lot of people are just here to see the ruby. Um, <laughs> and don't really care about the opera. You notice um, Casimir because you've seen Jules before and you you know, you, you can hear the ooh. Uh, mm-hmm. You notice at the sides of the stage, there are several um, sort of clusters of security. 
Uh, it looks like whenever the ruby is on stage, people have eyes on it, are watching it carefully. Okay. Cool. Flashback. Yeah. To, uh, is there like a yard in the back of the antiques, like, shop? I'm just kind of imagining a space, like maybe maybe it's like the corner that, that Zilla has commandeered to be like the workout space. Well, you're in Eleanor's house now where there is absolutely oh. buckets of space for whatever you need. Amazing. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't. I, so I don't want to speak into canon what Zilla's training space is like. Um, Zilla, what's your training space like? Uh, it's mostly upturned bed frames for doing chin, chin ups on different <laughs> shapes and sizes. Of... It's a big, t- big tire to hit with a sledgehammer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Flashback Zilla's there with like two sandbags. Uh, and Kazumi is like on a step ladder with a funnel and just like buckets of basically ball bearings. Being Ooh. like, are you sure these aren't getting too heavy? And Zilla's like, ah, no. More ball bearings. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I basically I, I want the, the sacks to actually be full of things that will make lots of people trip up in a spectacular fashion if used appropriately. Okay. So that when we flash back, Kazumi can just be like, yeah, for the 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 ball bearings is fine. You've had time and means to secure them, but for the sort of secret signals, uh, take one stress. I think. All right, so, yeah. mm. happily. Flashback. Yep. I was appraised of this plan as well, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. so I knew to keep an eye on the security. And if the plan seemed like it was starting to go into motion, then I also am going to act as well. Cool. Okay. I feel like you appraised the situation, but. I- Casimir having to rush back and forth with more ball bearings <laughs> to the shouts of more ball bearings I ignored the whole situation <laughs> yes okay the the play progresses everything seems to be going okay uh, Lilith you are required for more sort of minor set moving and, and mm-hmm. kind of things in, in, in the darkness but it's nothing too challenging you're able to just follow everyone else's lead and there's been nothing as difficult as the wheel hoisting um, Edvard you've got all the lighting cues pretty much down by this point you're really good at this so um uh, you know so you, you you and your you and your colleagues are are lighting up a storm barnaby you're next to squiffy and squiffy is now snoring loudly mm. <laughs> casimir and zilla however mm. as you are stood there stacking sandbags a man comes running along uh he is holding a large barrel uh it's not a real barrel it's kind of a stage barrel in that it's made of kind of very light and flimsy wood uh, and but painted to you know look a bit sort of darker and more serious it's got no like iron banding around the sides but it does have like stripes of black paint and stuff got it. Uh, are either of you familiar with the opera Casimir or okay it's no not my bag probably fair. probably not no fair enough well you don't know what the barrel is for then, but it seems like it's some kind of prop. Uh, and as the um, uh, and uh, as the man comes running along, clearly he runs this route a lot, and there aren't usually a load of sandbags there, and he trips and falls and just crushes the barrel completely underneath him. Is he hurt? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> fatally. <laughs> Not fatally. Um, oh, he's oh, can you imagine the death out. wardens <laughs> turning up? He's winded. Uh, so winded, in fact, that he like can't really... Uh, t- he's knocked unconscious. Um, yeah. Bonk! Like that. <laughs> well, that was stupid of him, I observed. Yes. Yeah, he needs to watch where he's going. This is a dangerous environment. From the kind of front of house, uh, you can hear the old singing you can hear the the actor playing captain shattershield uh starting to sing a line it's in an, and it's in an old language but there are a few words you can pick out and one of them is barrel and he's singing about some kind of scheme he's cooking up mm. in an oh. old yeah in an mm. operatic language sounds like they need a prop in fairness yeah uh you you strongly suspect that moments from now a barrel is going to be needed on stage and you have an unconscious man Smash, smashed on the barrel. Can I put the unconscious man in the recovery position, which I invent or something? <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you what, I don't believe the recovery position would really exist in Volus Port because it just mo- makes sense, doesn't it? You just flip him over and I accidentally I, put him into a position that will later on, on become known as the recovery position. Can we make a Can we make a roll for how? How well you intuit the recovery. Head, the recovery position seems simple to us, but like it's 
you know. Yeah, you're yeah. right, you're right. It's not yeah. intuitive, is it? Yeah. yeah. Put them on their side with a hand like that, and then as you walk <laughs> off, you kick their head like a stationary football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make me a quick roll for... What do you want me to roll for putting someone in an uninvented recovery position? Well, to you, you're inventing a, you're inventing a medical p- procedure. Oh, no, you know, well, that's a, a, not really my... Uh, my thing. Um, study, I guess. I don't have any. What do I do if I have no dots? Uh, you roll two and take the worst result. That's it. Okay. It's a two and a two. Okay. Yeah. You um, <laughs> you you put this unconscious fellow in yes. what you believe yes. is the position uh, best designed to keep him alive while unconscious. And what that is is you put his whole hand in his mouth. <laughs> Sort of fit his whole his fist in. Clear, yeah. It's not easy. You have to you have to like dislocate his jaw uh, to oh, get God. it in there. But what you're thinking is yeah. that like if he's actually gripping his tongue, he can't then when it. he starts yeah. to come round, he will panic, grip, his tongue will hurt, and he will wake up quickly and it won't swallow it. And that yeah, and he won't yeah. swallow it exactly. Yeah. You've seen fighters swallow their tongue all too many times when they're unconscious. So this man is holding onto his tongue, so he can't. Swallow it. The logic is flawless. <sighs> and I, the logic is flawless. However, like doing the this prop barrel, yeah. Doing this takes a little time. No. And now someone is and now someone is hurrying towards you. It's the it's the, the woman with the clipboard from before. She's like, barrel, barrel, barrel. Where's Bertie with the barrel? Can I try and find a suitable replacement prop? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna roll hunt for this. I might actually push myself to take an extra die, because we don't want things to go sour. And that's a critical success. Yeah. Yes. I'm on okay. four stress, but uh, we've got we've we found something that they will accept. Okay. Um. Well, let's see. What it is is there's a discarded. Now that they've wheeled the omnibus, like back, it's no longer on stage because the action has moved beyond the the wheel of steel reparation scene. And so that is just kind of now sitting idle. Uh, along the, the the back of it is kind of made of, of planks of wood attached with rope. And Casimir, thinking very quickly, you basically pull the whole thing off, uh, kind of wrap it round and lash one end of the rope to the other. And you have a sort of cylinder of fragile wood that looks passingly like a barrel. Where's Bertie? Where's Barrel Bertie? He's indisposed. There's no time. Quick, get me on there. You have been an absolute lifesaver tonight. Don't Sorry, I didn't catch the name. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Casimir Jones. <laughs> Casimir Jones, thank you. <laughs> I will never forget the name because you've been so helpful. Great. And anyway, um, obviously you're filling in for Bertie, so you know what's happening. Go, go, go. Don't Absolutely. let me hold you up. Absolutely. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I want to basically. I'm, I'd, I'd like to try and style this out, and just walk on like there's a comedy relief tradesman character. You know, like in Anthony and Cleopatra, where the guy who brings the asp mm. that's going to kill Cleopatra, and Anthony yeah. turns up and is like, "I wish you joy of the worm." <laughs> I'm yes. going to do that, but with a barrel. Cool. So the barrel's yes. up here, and I'm going to be like plod, 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 and I'm just going to underarm toss it to Shattershield. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, you you walk on stage, Casimir. Uh, the lights are blinding. You can only very faintly perceive the absolutely gigantic audience uh, of, of people watching. Edvard, you and Barnaby, your uh, your breath catches as you see mm. Casimir walk out on stage. <laughs> Sorry, is the gem visible on stage at the moment? Has it been introduced yet? Yes, it's been introduced, and it's now around the neck of the soprano character Lady Fienge. However, uh, this scene uh, currently is um, only Captain Shattershield, uh, because as you surmise, Casimir, because you rolled a six as you walk on stage, this is Captain Shattershield uh, singing his song, his uh, res, res, recitativo. Sure. Is that right? Oh, sure, yeah. It's the one where you're allowed. It's the one where you're basically like allowed to talk like normally ah, mm, in an opera. Right. Yeah, oh, uh, and he's rapping. He's he's rapping. He's yeah. doing he's doing a cool <laughs> funky fresh rap. He's he's singing. He's singing about a plot. He's singing. The page Chauncey will ruin my plans. I'll send him down the river in a barrel. Aha! 
And now to pick up the barrel and enact my wicked scheme. And he spins around and sees you, Casimir, and goes, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. What I'd like to do is roll the barrel towards Shattershield across the stage, turn to the audience and kind of like cut it up and say to him like, I didn't see nothing. And then I'm going to wink at the audience and I'm going to leave again. Cool, cool. Huge peals of laughter from you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Relieved to have something entertaining. Finally, some comedy in this thing. That's um, the plan. I tell you what, that's brilliant. I don't think you should have to roll for it because actually all you're doing is saying your lines. What I'm going to do is a fortune roll for Shattershield to see how well he rolls with this disruption <laughs> to his consummate professional Shattershield. That's a six. Hey! Oh, my <laughs> God. Fun. Drawing on every ounce of his classical training, <laughs> uh, the, the, the gentleman deep inside the papier-mâché dragon suit uh, sees the barrel rolling towards him and goes, Thank you, Barrel Bertie, bringer of the barrels. A big hand for Barrel Bertie. And everyone goes, hooray! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to exit the stage, if that's okay. Yep, yep. I would like to use one of my uh, boxes of Lowe's to produce a fine bottle of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I you taught him your, everything he knows. <laughs> you have made your stage debut, and I will say it went down so well that uh, it is going to feature in the reviews. Oh. <laughs> Shattershield con continues, you know, brilliantly uh, ad libbing and Im improvising. Now that Barrel Bertie has brought the barrel, that youth Chauncey I'll stuff inside and float him to his grave. Uh, and with that, the curtain comes down on Act Two. <laughs> Oh. It is All right. Edible. I'm going to head towards well, I guess towards the the area that heads back towards the dressing rooms I suppose. Where am I? Yeah, like yeah. you head to, sort of down to the lobby. Um I'm going to say Barnaby, you 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 don't know how to get backstage, so you're going to have mm. to sort of figure look, it out. Look around. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything in look around. <laughs> oh, no, I do have I do have one in survey. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's fine. not called look around. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna nothing on this sheet that says my character has <laughs> eyes. <laughs> uh, so I've just got one dot in survey. So I'm yeah, gonna you can you can push yourself and take one stress if you like, and Rob make it two. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a five. A five. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, you uh, you find a. Door that is suspicious only in such as that there's a security fellow um, mm. sort of stu stood in front of it, and you ask him, you know, and, and upon questioning, he he says that yes, this does lead to mm. the green rooms and the dressing rooms. Why the hell are you asking? Well, because I'm expected uh, by by Miss Morland. So you know, run along, good man, and go and find her. I have been instructed not to leave my post. I am nothing to do with the performance. I am here to preserve the sacred ruby with which we have been entrusted. Yes, ruby, ruby, ruby. But, you know, I'm a very important person. I don't know if you've noticed. Look how I'm dressed. Very important person. Could you go and, um, you know, either you go and find Miss Morland or you find someone who can find Miss Morland for me, please? <laughs> uh... Let's have another roll for that. Let's let's mm -hmm. have a yeah. Do you want a sway roll for that? Or well, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm gonna try and sway him. Sure. You know, I could probably, you know, I don't know. I could threaten him somehow by being rich. I'd be like, I'll, you know, I'll talk to your supervisor, have you fired or whatever. Uh, that is two twos and a three. So I guess I'm not doing a great job of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. have you fired probably. Come on. I Why aren't you cooperating? I I'm, beg, I'm sorry, I beg your pardon. Have me fired? Yes. Yes, for obstructing me. Okay, well, why don't we go and talk to my manager and we'll see if he wishes to fire me or whether he has more of a problem with you. And he's going to collar you, Barnaby. Uh, and uh, this is very expensive. And <laughs> drag Careful, you. Careful, you. 
and he's going to drag you bodily um, <laughs> out of the lobby uh, okay. through another door and down some uh, down some rather sort of dingy <laughs> concretey corridors uh, that are all lined with more security uh, and into a into a small room where another security person is sat behind a desk um, and the the one who dragged you in kind of forcibly sits you down in a in a chair mm-hmm. um Chief, uh, I think we've got a. I think we've got a code blue here. <laughs> code blue. Oh, really? Says so, yeah. That's, that's going to be the voice of the head. <laughs> Security, why not? Oh, really? A code blue, and who are you then? Well, I'm here to see Miss Morland, and I've been held up by your uh, employee, or whatever. This chap, who right, I, well, I feel rather overzealous actually in his position, standing uh, in front of doors. I'll have you know that this chap is my best friend, <laughs> Bill Braces, and we yeah. served on the force together for, what was it, Bill? 20 years. Right. And uh, I trust his gut more than I trust anything in this world. Right. And if he thinks you're shifty, you're shifty, so spill it. Uh, do I look shifty to you? Do I look like the shifty sort? A little. Why do you, why, I mean, why are you even holding me up here, really? I'm here to enjoy the opera. I'm a close personal friend of Ms. Morland, and she's going to be furious when uh, when she finds out this, that you've held me up. You come to this uh, opera alone? No, I'm here with my friend Squiffy. He's back in the box. I see. And if I bring this Squiffy down, he'll... Well, he's asleep. Don't disturb him. He needs his beauty sleep. <laughs> Quite an ugly fellow, actually. Mr. Barnaby, this Squiffy character isn't exactly sounding terribly real to me. You say he's here, he knows that you're here and you came together, but he's asleep and can't be found? And has a pyramid for a head. Uh, have you <laughs> have you ever tried to watch the opera? It's extremely boring. He's fallen asleep in the box. We can go up there and find, you know, you can go up there and find him. Oh, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Leave this room. Well, I mean, it's up to you, really. But the longer this goes on, the more furious Ms. Morland uh, will be. And let me tell you, she has quite, sway, quite a lot of sway in this city. What so, do you know uh, about the ruby? What ruby? What's your interest in it? Well, sorry, Ruby, what are you talking about? You mean to tell me that you came to see this boring, <laughs> terrible opera? <laughs> yes, because I'm a close personal friend of Ms. Morland, and that's what friends do. They go and watch the boring, tedious nonsense that their friends are doing to be supportive. That is true. I've done Amdram. <laughs> <laughs> That is fair. Did Bill come and see it? Did Billy Braces come and see your am Of course Bill came to see it. Well, quite, exactly. You loved it, didn't you, Bill? Bill, <laughs> it, it takes a sec- Bill a second too long, but he goes... <laughs> there you go. You understand the bond of friendship. That's why I'm here. Bill, go uh, ask Miss Morland if, uh, if, if he is who he says who he is. Thank you very much, chaps. Bill disappears, but while Bill is out, you are pressed for uh, quite a lot of information that this sort of head of security is going to write down, Barnaby. They're going to ask for your name. They're going to ask for your address. They're going to ask for your Absolutely. parents' names. Are you going to sort of give it all freely? Or are you I going have to nothing to hide. Uh, obviously, okay. I would be at the opera. Okay. Look at me. Yep. Nothing to hide, gentlemen. That is that is fair. Barnaby Fortescue the Third, as it says on my monogrammed... Uh, Hanky that I've got here. Look, all the evidence you need. Lovely. Um, BF the, three. The, <laughs> yeah, exactly. BF three. The hanky has some like squiffy sick on it. Um, <laughs> classic squiffy. <laughs> a little while later, uh, Bill does return, uh, looking extremely disappointed to say um, Miss Morland did request uh, an audience with. Um, the Thank gentleman. you, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've, we've wasted quite enough time, but, you know, you, you chaps keep up the good work. How long is this interval? The interval is 15 minutes, sort of standard. By the time you get to the dressing room, Barnaby, uh, there's only a minute before, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> before before curtains up again. What are you doing? You're stu- you're, your bill is taking it. You're outside the door. Well... Outside the door. There's a little star on it, and it yeah. says, uh, Morlin. I'm going to knock on the door. Yep. Cool. Come in. I'm going to open the door and say... <gasps> Darling, you were wonderful. Absolutely fabulous performance. Fabulous, yes. And you look radiant as well. I mean, uh, you really, 
You're really outshining that necklace thing of yours. Oh, pish posh, no one's here to see little old me. They're just here to look at these gaudy not things. Not at all, not at all. She looks yeah. down at her and, and sort of on her right here is the... Mm. She's kind of like between costume changes. She's not alone in the room. Uh, mm. there's, a, uh, there's a hair and makeup person. Uh, there's a costume person who stood by a, a big rack of extremely awesome dresses, uh, who's, mm. you know, kind of sorting out the next one. Uh, and there are two more security uh, in this room because the gem is in here. Well, look, I was trying to be uh, trying to be here for the interval to, to to wish you luck, but honestly, I was I was detained by uh, by these security gentlemen uh, who are real real drag. I, I think. I, you know, oh my goodness! Fine. It's like I've got three shadows. Oh, everywhere. I mean, do you get any time away from them at all? Well, all right, but well, she sort of like has you in close, Barnaby. Like, mm. I rather hoped you would ask that, Barnaby. There is a, there is actually a um, a private spot backstage that really? uh, that um, the security don't know about. Um, sometimes I go there and smoke my pipe. Oh, really? Uh, is there a, is there a large uh, sort of gap in the performance where you're not required, where you can just you know relax a little bit? Because it seems very stressful. It's yes. The third. Uh, how familiar are you with the opera? Not terribly, but I'm. A, I, let me tell you, I'm a big fan now. Well, the third act is. Well, let's just say it's a little chauncey heavy, right. a little bit, uh, a little bit fienge light. So mm. yes, I mean, I, I used to read, but it, it's such a long, boring bit. I, I've taken to, um, uh, yeah, smoking my pipe a little bit in this uh, sort of hidden right, well, spot. I, 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 I'm not allowed to take the ruby with me. Um, one no, of these, of uh, one of these security people is is friendly with me, and they just pocket it for a minute while I pop out smoke mm. my pipe. Anyway, um, Barnaby, I take it you would like to rendezvous with me? Mm, little, yes. In little, my secret little spot. rendezvous would be lovely, yes. Um, what, so, let, give me a cue. When when should I when should I head in, over there to, you know, so we can oh. properly catch up? Uh, it's when um, it's when the best point is when uh, Chauncey pops out of the bottle. Uh, he has a long uh, ensemble piece then about how he intends to come back and and woo me away from Shattershield, but it really, really drags on. Mm. Um, so that's the best spot. I'm sure it'll make sense in context. I'll, I'll listen out for it. Yes. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll draw you a map. On the back of a flyer, mm. she draws you a little map, Barnaby, um, and it's to a... Uh, yeah, it's just to like a little... It, it's a sort of crude map of the backstage, uh, and there's kind of like one tunnel that leads off to the bathrooms, mm. uh, and there's a, a cupboard off there that she, you know, has just sort of like put, put a cross in. Cool. So you know where she will be during the performance, mm. but she won't have the ruby. The ruby will be with the security person outside. But maybe the opportunity will come at the point where that is handed off. Okay, cool. I'll take the uh, I'll take the the map. Cool. Say, Are you going to hang around backstage here? You? Uh, I think or... so. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's the easiest way now, isn't it, to to get to that spot at the time. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I I have permission to be here now. So I'm just going to mooch around and maybe try and uh, connect with my fellow heist heisters. So I say, break a leg, darling. Uh, you'll be wonderful, I'm sure. I don't even know <laughs> why I'm saying that. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, of course. Yeah. She sort of kissy, 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 kissy. Yeah. Uh, she goes off. And um, yeah, and Edvard, you, you kick off the second act with your lighting cues. And we're off to the races again. Um, uh, yeah, so in act three, uh, the page Chauncey enacts his daring escape um, from the barrel. Lilith, you are made aware of this for the first time uh, because, again, <laughs> everyone else who's dressed all in black uh, kind of rushes out. Mm -hmm. They're not, like, lifting anything at this point. You're not really sure what they're doing. Are you going to go with them? Yeah, I'm just going to mirror them as much as I can. Cool. What happens is they all run out on stage uh, and line up in a row. They are against a big piece of blue board. Then, as the music swells uh, they all turn side on um, and start doing this <laughs> in perfect unison you real and you, you realize even if, you're not <laughs> sure what they're doing but Edvard from your position you can see it is a perfect uh, imitation Flawless. of some waves of, 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 a, of a rushing stream beautiful and a barrel um, is 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 sort of bobbed along by a couple of um, by a couple of these kind of all black figures like that mm -hmm. so what are you doing I would like to join the barrel people 
<laughs> Quick, I would like to duck out and join the barrel as, as like, because rather than risk being in sync and falling out of synchronicity with the others, okay. just I think that's the safer. Yeah, just kind of just, no, but just be like an extra weight of like, just, okay. just do like this. <laughs> it's a bit easier than trying to be in <laughs> sync right. with people that I cannot fully see. So yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. Make me a roll for that then. All right. All right. I'm gonna go for <laughs> finesse. <laughs> Four and a two, so four. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you sort of... Everyone else is kind of like going like this and you kind of go like... <laughs> and, and just sort of wander out into the middle of the stage and like over towards the barrel and as the barrel is kind of carried across the stage you just kind of crab walk next to it. <laughs> like that, going... Splishy, splashy, splishy, splashy, splashy, splashy. Yeah. From the wings, I see this and I'm like... Well, now I know which one Lilith is. So, <laughs> when she, got, of, like, when she gets off stage. The, <laughs> just tilt the lights away yeah. from, from her, yeah. so it's not quite so obvious. So when Lilith gets off stage, I'm going to try and rendezvous with her um, briefly and, and explain what's going to happen during okay, the Okay, great. Um, I'm going to tick uh, another, another segment. Piece. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna take two. <laughs> oh, this okay. whole time Lilith is absolutely mortified. <laughs> like she's so glad that no one can see her. <laughs> yeah, the the sort of blushing red there. Yeah. Uh, yes, but as you get back, as you do sort of crab walk off stage, um, mm-hmm. you do find Barnaby. You can grab her arm or yeah. Sort of if you... <laughs> I'll just sort of yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lilith, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I saw you on stage <laughs> and immediately I knew it was you. Uh, <laughs> Celia, Celia. <laughs> Listen, I, I've mm-hmm. got some information. You'd have known Fight. it was her if you'd listened to any of the briefings we had before we went on this. This no, is the plan. Yeah, but the I, thing is, we're all uh, in They black. all look the same, so I need so to know which track. one is her. So, yeah. Um, so I mean, Barnaby didn't even know Lilith was coming. He did not listen to any <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely. Fancy I've seen, seen that here crab walk before. I've seen but, that crab walk before. Barnaby's delighted to find that someone else is trying to steal the gem. This is going to make things a lot easier. Anyway, so I, I've got, I've got some information. Okay, so uh, Ms. Warcroft is going to is going to um, pop to a, a sort of private area um, where she likes to relax, but she has to hand off the gem to security, and I think that handoff time might be the moment to, you know, do the old switcheroo thing. So okay. it's going to happen at this particular point in the in the play. It's very, uh, in the opera, it's a very uh, chauncey heavy moment, but there's a sort of cue. Um, and and then, um, and then yeah, we, if we can uh, somehow distract the security guard or incapacitate the security guard, I, could I think that's our moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he'll be distracted beyond belief and we'll have no idea what's going on and that might be might be perfect so okay. this is this is the map look uh, you mm-hmm. know either commit it to memory or i don't know draw a, draw a copy or whatever um and then we, you know we this is this is our moment basically okay i try and commit it to memory so i'm like so it's kind of like over there she'll be out there you'll be chatting to her there and he'll be there and it'll be in his pocket okay i mean you must be familiar with the backstage area you've been here for some time haven't you i mm-hmm. mean mm-hmm. you know I presume you all got in six hours early, you know, while I was yeah, yeah, yeah. Getting well, I dressed. had to get in and uh, convince the other person to leave and have me cover for them. Exactly, you know. Whereas I showed up twenty minutes beforehand and went straight to the bar. Um, so, you know, you you commit that to memory. You probably know where you're going, and um, I'm mm-hmm. going to go and try and find uh, Zilla and Casimir. They're round here somewhere, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they, they're there's behind a you. lot of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why do you always do that? Fine. All right, well, you all know the plan now. Saves me repeating it. Uh, I'll be, you know, waiting to meet up with Ms. Moorcroft. Okay. The moment is fast approaching because on stage uh, you can see uh, the young page Chauncey emerging from the barrel uh, and going, Oh, <laughs> my l- lady Fiengue, where, where have you gone, my love? <laughs> sort of, you see the actor sort of stealing himself for what is clearly... Something he's going to relish a very Chauncey heavy uh, <laughs> section, <laughs> section of the opera as Chauncey enlists the good people of the village to help return him to Lady Fienge in time f- to interrupt the wedding to Captain Shattershield that is going ahead because Captain Shattershield has told everyone that Chauncey is dead. Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, right. 
But yes, the moment approacheth. Um, you know, all of you, that right now, surprise. <laughs> what's the name? You know that Emmeline. You know right now that Emily that Emmeline is is sneaking off to get her uh, to smoke her pipe. I think you'll find it's Emily. But <laughs> oh yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what do? I would like uh, to propose some work with A the toast? sandbags. I'm up for that. Oh, uh, okay. no. Sandbags. Oh. Aren't you making out with Emily? I will be. Yeah, very yeah. shortly. Can't... Just warm up your lip area. Okay. And yeah. We'll Barn- take Barnaby's, care of Barnaby's we'll all set. Exercises. But um, yeah, basically, oh. I would like. Go on, Lilith. I think that there could be some use for the sandbags in that maybe if I were to be lowered from the dark. You know, recesses loving of the, visual. the top. Mm. And just, just not getting the concept. Sit down, and someone who is on a like rope and pulley with the sandbags and right. Yeah, you want you want us to repel you into yeah. to where though? Above where the security officer will be standing next to the door. More like ah. it's some sort of impossible mission. Mm. Yeah, but I think it's very much impo- uh, very much possible. <laughs> what? I I can't talk to any of them, can I? No. Um. You can talk. You can though. you can signal it in lights. Have you rigged up any, you rigged up any kind of automation? Code. We agreed a code, 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 a Morse it. style code. Okay, well, through a series of Morse code blinks of the lights. Uh-huh. Yeah. Flashback, uh-huh. we all learn. Yeah. <laughs> Flashback, we all learn the new Morse code. It's not it's been a, a training big heavy. Code. Yeah. Flashback, yeah. I didn't learn it. Yeah. Okay. Of course, well, I didn't learn it. Flashback. Well, be take one stress it. for your I didn't learn it flashback. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. It seems to me that yes. this Lady Fienge costume is very large and elaborate, and the thing right. that people notice about Lady Fienge is more the costume than the person. So, what if you were to somehow remove Emmeline and replace her with one of you in the Lady Fienge costume, and then you would be handed the gem? Message sent. I'm leaning up against you. I'm not going out here again. <laughs> you can, you can me I've had about half a bottle of whiskey. It's not hit me yet, but it will. <laughs> it's any second now. Yeah. Are you blink? You're blinking this back with a little hand torch. Yeah. Uh, it's a lantern yeah. with a. Right. Uh, shut up. <laughs> it's making an incredible noise. <laughs> uh, he's on the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why don't we try the impossible mission? Uh, in which we lower uh, Lilith, who is invisible and imperceptible to the human eye because of all the black clothing. Uh, and if you fail to lift the ruby from the security guard's pocket, mm. then we go to... Plan B. Lady Fake Fienge. Yeah. Persuade Emmeline to take her costume off. We don't persuade her. We Well, do we persuade her? I, I mean, could. Are, you gonna, are you going to persuade her out of her costume? Maybe. All right, okay. Um, what we do in the privacy of our secret hiding spot is our own business. Okay, Quite Barnaby frankly. will get Emmeline naked and we'll steal her clothes. <laughs> Not necessarily then, naked, I guess it's just the Just out the dress. Flashback, flashback. Okay. I don't know what she wears under her costume. <laughs> a uh, second, more elaborate costume. <laughs> <laughs> All well, the other parts does costume in case she needs to yeah, understudy for anyone. Okay, okay. I don't know whether I need to do this in a flashback or not, but how about we put a uh, kind of hunter-style trap by the door a what? that could loop the security guard's leg and it goes a snare boom, Why? a snare but and then, then we'll, it falls we'll it falls ourselves. no no it falls out of his pocket Casimir and he'll be like oh who Casimir left and Zilla no Casimir and Zilla be like oh my goodness who left this oh this is wide <laughs> health and safety <laughs> these theatrical snares are more trouble than they're worth yeah, but it won't look like a snare. It'll just look like okay. someone tied up a sandbag wrong. Right, 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 right. Another backstage accident in which yeah. Ruby was... Blame it on the unconscious guy. <laughs> Poor Bertie Barrel. He's had such a day. Yeah. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of plans here. <laughs> a lot of them have ropes in I One of them is very good. <laughs> Uh, I have no opinion on the quality of the plan. But I think we should I, I try for the say... snatch and grab. The, where okay, we... the snatch. Because All if right. it fails, we haven't given ourselves away and yeah. we've got the second shot. Okay, okay. All right, so I'm hanging from <laughs> by the waist. Hanging okay. above in the darkness. We're in the rafters. You so know, the, in the... So yeah. the plan is here, right? Obviously, Zilla and Casimir, you... Can we be up on the catwalk? 
you know, around uh, the, the theatre Well, let's yeah. find out. You've got to get up there pretty quick because this chauncey heavy bit just started. But it's very long and boring. It is very long and boring, though. Yeah, I'm going to say you have catwalk access, but Casimir, this feels like a kind of ladder-heavy situation. Are you going to <laughs> engage the leg? Yeah, I'm going to have to. Okay. Yeah, I, I push the little valve that basically frees up my brace a little bit and then sort of just... I'll wince my way up the ladder. Cool. Um, I think you've established your backstage credentials enough that no one's going to notice you sort of scampering up a, a ladder up onto the catwalk. I'm going to take stress for this, if that's all right, because yep. it's just what happens when I do the thing with my knee. Mm-hmm. Of course. While you're up here from the catwalk, you have a commanding view of the whole backstage area. It's Can we see of... into Barnaby's makeout area? No! You cannot see into you Barnaby's makeout But it's probably area, visible though. from the catwalk. <laughs> no. I'm, engineer... no I'm going to spend my entire time up here engineering some sort of mirror <laughs> so that we can see into Barnaby's makeout area. <laughs> what is wrong Which with you people? Voyeurs! Mouth, I guess. Voyeurs. What? Now that you all know the spot that you're looking for, you can see that along one curved wall of the rear of the backstage um, there are several doors that are clearly marked uh, like staff toilets and then there is a a third door next to it that is uh, just blank it doesn't it doesn't say anything it's a disused cupboard basically and this is the this is the room mm -hmm. this is the spot where um, uh, where she goes to smoke her pipe in secret and in fact now that you're up here you can see uh, that stood next to this door is a very bored looking, very, very surly guard um, who is just, you know, just kind of like leaned up against the wall and the door is shut so you can probably surmise that she's in there already. Okay. Are we going to assume that the security guard guarding the door is the security mm. guard holding the gem for her? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, then to. we sort of make our way quietly over to the part of the catwalk closest to that door. As I stride towards it and conspiratorially whisper to the security guide that Ms. Morland is expecting me. Yeah, Ms. Morland has made this, uh, although she would have that, mentioned, surely. Is that the name you're giving, Barnaby? Well, yeah, I, I, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Emily's expecting me. Emily? Yes. Uh, must be a pet name. Uh, she said mm. I was to expect a... What was it? Ber Bernard? You Bernard? That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> All right, Bernard. He's not too worried about security. The thing that he's protecting mm. is protected. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so he sort of just opens the door and um, you slip inside. Mm -hmm. um, Emmeline is in there, Barnaby, wreathed in pipe smoke. Mm. Uh, and she sort of sashays over towards you and uh, puts the pipe suggestively in your mouth. Um, and I think at this point we'll cut it outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Thinking about the age rate. <laughs> <laughs> Taste will fade to black. <laughs> okay, we toss a length of rope over yeah. a light fitting, you know, a sort of a bar on which many lights are yeah. arrayed, and, and grab the other end, loop it around around Lilith in a sort of harness shape. Mm -hmm. Quickly tie that off. And then we're going to launch her. I wouldn't say launch. <laughs> no, we're going to no, launch her. It's launch or nothing, mate. Okay. We're going to launch her. She's going to fly Peter Pan style, but no one will see because mm -hmm. she's invisible. And then, and, then, and then from there we will lower her. Yep. Okay. okay. Cool. I, will, I will brace against the, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll belay you. It's, it'll be fine. Uh, okay, Casimir, Zilla. I don't know who's doing this. Maybe you want to do a group action and somebody leads it. But uh, yeah, make me some rolls for the for the initial hoisting. <laughs> okay. What were you thinking in terms of skill? Oh, uh, it seems like a s strengthy kind of mm. task, but the strengthiest sort of attribute is wreck, and I'm not really trying to wreck anything. We could finesse it. We could finesse it. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. I've got no, no we don't have to finesse it. Finesse. You finesse. <laughs> you do the finessey part. I'll do the strengthy part. Um, so take the lead, Casimir. All right. Okay. So what are we rolling? Can I help? I will yep. do a help. Yep. 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 I'm, when you I'm do a, a when you do a group action, everybody yeah. rolls, and yeah. you take the highest result. But Casimir, if he's leading it, will take 
uh, stress for every oh. uh, one, two, or three. Oh. Okay. okay. So it's a collaborative finesse yeah. yep. to launch Lilith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've only got one in finesse, so my inclination is to push myself. Uh-uh. Do it. Which does somewhat put me in danger if this goes badly. But we can deal with that <laughs> if it happens. No pressure. How much finesse have you got, Lilith? Can, do I do I help in <laughs> yeah, this? Yeah, it's a great I... roll. Don't we all roll for yeah, it? Yeah, but I don't know whether I'm being... You're doing you, the hoisting. If you want, yes. You're very the... much an active part of the... Okay, team. well, like, yeah. I, could le- I could lead this with my two in finesse and take the stress. Yeah, you've got loads of yes. finesse and dance and okay. grace. So, in fact, yes. we're taking your directions. Because this was your plan to start with, Lilith. Okay. I, I yell under my breath. <laughs> you yell non-accusingly. <laughs> At the top of the <laughs> Okay. Um, in right. that case, I'm going to... Is it all right if I actually don't take part in the group action, but I can, with foresight, help once, uh, no, twice per score without taking any stress? Uh, cool. So yeah, nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Lilith kind of like find the balance point. Dilla's obviously like hauling. I just mm-hmm. want to be banksman, mm-hmm. like just yeah. giving it, mm-hmm. giving it all of this. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. So that's an extra die for Lilith. Okay, lovely. But so I don't take any more stress. Three. Okay. okay. This is just to get you up in the air. Alright. <laughs> That's a a three, a two, and a one. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Launch. We did say launch. Okay. Oh, no. Um This is why we have a plan A. And do, plan I, do I get do I get stress for all of those? Stress is not the problem for you, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, I'm feeling um, quite str- So wait, this was a group action, right? So yeah. Did that so? Zilla, uh, Zilla you- roll finesse as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, oh, this is a six actually. Oh wait, no, I take the worst one. No, sorry, it's a two because I take okay. the worst one. <laughs> it's, right. the, it's the other thing. The Lilith, you one. take okay. two stress. Okay. Okay. Cool. That is the beginning of your troubles. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Here's the rest of the troubles. Okay, Zilla gives an almighty. Whee on this rope and boy you just are just in like one frame of movement are just boom, out of there uh you swing very very quickly kind of over towards in the direction you were supposed to be going um you sort of uh <laughs> yeah and then past it over you kind of see a, a sort of top down view of the security guard who you're trying to get over just kind of go in your vision (laughs) and then on the way back and it's just gonna swing and the rope's just gonna snap when it's kind of over the middle of the stage and you're just gonna plummet Uh, and you're gonna land on Chauncey of course you being dressed all in black to the audience it looks like Chauncey just collapses (laughs) Uh, I switch um on a giant spotlight that I set up earlier that is on Swiffy <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> Great. Brilliant. Okay. Um, the, as Chauncey crumples and <laughs> makes a pained moan but survives oh. and is going to be okay. Uh, Lilith, I think you'd better take harm for <laughs> that. Broken face. Let's just call it level one harm smashed up body. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Putting that in. Yeah. Smashed up body. Oh, smashed cool. up body, yeah. Yeah, yeah um, that's in there. <laughs> yes. And Edvard, genius, because as Chauncey hits the deck, blackout on stage, and then a moment later, dunk, a light, a god ray slants down on the sleeping form of <laughs> Algernon Squiffy. Of Algernon Squiffy, who... Wakes up. <laughs> Hello? Am I an opera? <laughs> the audience is hushed. <laughs> uh, Squiffy stands up. Uh, um... Th- 
There once was a woman from Brightstone <laughs> who found she was unusually, and he launches into an absolutely obscene limerick um, that is completely unrepeatable here. He gets uh, he gets right up to the last few words, the comic payoff to this ex- extremely ribald limerick when <laughs> he is uh, bodied to the ground by a few security guards. <laughs> um, at the same moment, Edvard, um, you find that you are being pulled away from the controls by your colleagues uh, who were going what the hell he's very rich and it's his birthday <laughs> <laughs> we weren't told you weren't told birthday you didn't get the memo no he's, that's Algernon Squ- Squiffy something Squiffington Squiffington that's Algernon Squiffy Squiffington <laughs> everyone knows him he's always he he's patronising the next Two seasons of the opera if we let him do his limericks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, make me a make me a roll for this, Ed, Edvard. Um, All right, but yeah, from a controlled position because you're really selling it. <laughs> okay, but that's uh, that new dot in sway to use. It's a four. They are um, not. But they, they, yeah, they, they're like, okay. So should we, should we keep the lights just on? Let him, let him because finish. he's been just... beaten up quite savagely <laughs> now. Is this a birthday surprise? Or... That was, that's part of it. You know these aristocrats. I mean, they're into some weird stuff. They're into some stuff, aren't they? Okay. Well, does the show resume, or is this like it? Yeah, it will. Opera? It will in a second. I'm sort of one eye on what's going on with Lilith. <laughs> right. Um, okay. What? is going on with Lilith. Um, <laughs> Lilith is trying to just scramble off into the wings as quickly as possible. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think, like, to be fair, although this place is crawling with security, they are primarily focused on the, you know, securing the gem. Uh, if something goes wrong with the opera, like, they do <laughs> they not care. care. So, d- like, no one is going to stop you scrambling mm-hmm. away, kind of holding your ribs, wheezing. Um <laughs> something might be broken in there when you move you can kind of feel a, a clicking that shouldn't oh. be happening <laughs> but you do make it uh, off stage while mm-hmm. you know during blackout mm. um however a lot of guards have uh, are kind of milling around because they are trying to find emily they're trying to find miss morlin um they know that she has the gem and something has happened they just want to make sure yeah make sure uh so around that door uh, mm-hmm. That you know, Barnaby and Emmeline are in. Uh, there are now kind of several security guards kind of buzzing around. And in fact, the security guard who has the gem in his pocket yeah, probably yeah. isn't going to own up to that. He's not supposed to have the gem in his pocket. He's supposed to be watching Emmeline. Uh, anyway, you see a heated discussion happening like between these. Between Would these now guards. be a good time to cover the backstage in ball bearings. I don't think it could be a worse idea. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one solution now, and that is for Barnaby, the only one in the room with Emmeline, <laughs> to put on the costume and continue <laughs> the f- opera. You must take on the role of Lady Fienge, Barnaby. You're the only one who can do it now. All right, I'll take one for the team. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Barnaby, you're not aware of what's happened. However, you did hear a loud thump. The music Mm. has stopped and you heard a limerick that you haven't heard since you were in school. Mm. Uh, But I do remember it from school. Yes. So you are aware that something catastrophic has happened outside. Okay, fine. Emily, dear, I I know this is a bit unconventional, but I'd I'd rather like to try on your costume, actually. Um... I, I've always oh. rather rather uh, fancied it. <laughs> so if you would like to let me just have a go. It's a wonderful dress, and I think it would look quite striking on me. She takes a big huff on her pipe. <sighs> yeah? Have we got time? <laughs> yes, of course, darling. Of course, darling. I mean, it sounds like Was they've it, got... Did I hear something outside? I couldn't yeah. hear over the smooching. Uh, Your probably... lips were so warmed up. <laughs> yeah. It was quite it was loud. so loud. <laughs> Well, you really use every part of the mouth, Barnaby. Probably just some sort of technical issue, really. Um, you know, maybe, maybe, 
the heat we're generating here burnt out some of the lights or something. It's so so romantic in here. Um, That's romantic. Yeah. Mm, uh, yes. Um, <laughs> so, m- might, might I try your your dress on? Whatever you're into, Barnaby. It passes the time. Yep. Mm. Uh, yeah. So she um, removes the the dress. She is not naked under her dress. Obviously, no, she has many layers of uh, mm. you know underwear basically uh, but she does take the dress off it is an extremely floofy uh, mm. sort of red satin uh, thing um, it's you know designed to offset. And in fact no it's a wedding dress of course because there is a wedding mm. in act three it's a it's a large floofy white beautifully ornate uh, wedding dress yeah and you, you can slip that on that's fine yeah there's I a, hand her my coat because wig I assume as well yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah, there is a wig. It's not her, you know, like like most stage things. This, of course, she has a wig. A wig goes on. You look pretty good. Tell you what would be hilarious. What if? And I, 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 I mean, I think this would be brilliant. Here it is. Um, <laughs> but if you, if you, if you, if you are if we going to keep kissing now we swapped clothes? Or yes, in a, in a moment. But when you go back on, don't you think it'd be a wheeze in the final final scene? Um, if I played you. And mimed along to your singing. Don't you think that would be amazing? And hilarious. Did I say it would be hilarious? I think it'd be hilarious and brilliant. Real wheeze. Yeah. Real wheeze, yeah. Real yeah. wheeze. So yeah. you so I keep singing. Yes, well I can't sing, can I? But you could stand behind A great reason to not go on stage in this opera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but But the wheeze. But the wheeze. <laughs> You know, live a little. Isn't that what we're all here for? You're up to something, aren't you, Barnaby? Mmm. Up to uh, having fun with you. Yeah. I think this could really go somewhere, but we've got to got to learn to to enjoy ourselves a little bit. This is all so stuffy. <sighs> she pushes you against the wall. <laughs> You're here for the ruby, aren't you? What, what makes you say that? <laughs> everything that's happened <laughs> between you and me in the last 48 hours or so. Uh, well, Listen, but, Barnaby. Uh, yes? I want in. Okay. D- d- tell me more. Okay. Uh, how about this? Um, mm. 50% of the profits from whatever the hell you do with that thing. Right. Or in the next three seconds, I scream very loudly. Mm. <gasps> One... Yeah. To... No, 50% sounds entirely reasonable. We have an accord. Tremendous. <laughs> uh, get out there. It's your big number. And she, um, <laughs> she opens the door and boots you out and closes it behind her very quickly. And I stride onto the stage, only it with the sort of uh, unearned confidence of a very, very rich person. Let's say as you stride past the, um, the security guard who is there, um, sort of grabs the necklace out of his pocket mm. and just sort right. of... Like, See, seeing this and intuiting what is going on, <laughs> I spotlight. I some intuiting. So, Lilith is presumably leaving the stage as I'm off. <laughs> you're leaving the stage as <laughs> Barnaby Lilith's is coming on. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Lilith, you had the fake gem, right? Yeah, so I'm you're going like, to do the. I spotlight. Like, I spotlight the shattered Chauncey instead of the um, coming out, <laughs> so no one sees the switch. Cool. Yep. I take okay. the spotlight off Squiffy onto shattered Chauncey. Yes, that's good. Uh, let's make a quick roll for the transference of the gem, just mm-hmm. because there are okay. a lot of moving parts in the plan. Do I need yeah. to roll as well, Finesse? Or? I'd say it's going to be harder for Lilith because she's hurt. Okay. <laughs> she has to get the gem out and she has to throw it in the darkness mm-hmm. in the direction of... Barbie. Well, she's moving to the wings and I'm about to stride on stage, presumably. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Sort of... Wait, come on. Come on! Oh, hey, six. that looks like a six hey, to me. There you go. Okay, right. great. Yeah. Um, as 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 sort of Lilith kind of hobbles past you, um, Barnaby, uh, mm-hmm. you just feel pressed <laughs> just into your palm. Very confused. But I'm like, I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah. You you are confused, Lilith, but you're rolling with. It's not the weirdest thing you've seen. No. <laughs> and you you roll with it. Um, he's done. Yeah. He's done like uh, bigger things on a night mm. out. So. Yeah, exactly. You press the you press the fake gem into into Barnaby's hand. Barnaby, you are now mm. striding on stage. Presumably, the spotlight is coming back on you. Yeah. Uh, and you and have I'm... in your ha- closed in your fist mm. a fake gem, right around your neck, the real gem. And uh, Chauncey, who 
staggers up. He rolled a six, so he's he's okay. Good. <laughs> Lady Fiengei, <laughs> my love. Lady Fiengei, and he <laughs> gives you a huge embrace. He's alive. Uh, and suddenly, ev- lo- loads of other people just appear from the wings, and they all start mm. dancing, and they're, mm. they're singing a. a a chorus. It's a, a beautiful en- ensemble piece, mm. uh, and and behind you, Barnaby, you're a little bit obviously confused by all of this. But you like trees and st- like a wooded glade is kind of like kind of kind of brought in, mm-hmm. uh, and suddenly someone playing a vicar is there in front of you, and you are possibly legally wed to Chauncey. <laughs> uh, all this time, you are kind of gold fishing while <laughs> like from behind you, behind several layers of wood. Okay. Uh, Emmeline is just like belting out the you know, yeah the, the real thing yeah yes. <laughs> like and then I get to the moment in the song presumably where there's a moment of what should I do and I theatrically turn away from the crowd as if to consider my options am I going to marry Shattershield or am I going to you know live with my true love Chauncey because unbelievably that's the choice in front of me um <laughs> And as I do that, I'm, I'm looking away and, and considering what am I to do. Uh, that's when I'm going to make the switch with the stones. Cool. Yeah, On that's... stage, but facing away from the audience. Yeah, that's fine. No need to roll for that. I shall be as invisible if I were dressed all in black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Surprisingly visible, that. that. Yeah. We don't need to roll for that. Okay, so you now have swapped the gems. You have mm-hmm. the real gem in your hand and the fake gem is round your neck Shattershield begins like falls to his knees and says Lady Fienge I can still make you happy and by happy I mean rich let me kill Chauncey now and he makes a good point actually though <laughs> where to be here <laughs> is what you say Barnaby out loud but it's drowned out by the singing behind you um, Shattershield if thy loves this gem so much then swim for it and I Ooh. take the necklace off and I wang it into whatever is representing a stream a right whole now. bunch of people in dressed all in black <laughs> going like that is there any water at all yeah yeah there is there's there's kind of um like there's people stood off stage kind of like squirting uh, got it like wet. it's not like soaking wet but it is you know <laughs> it's it's um it's is this gem going mist. to dissolve as well it's simulating <laughs> the mist of a waterfall right okay it'll probably shatter if you threw it all right well i'm going to throw it and smash it against the ground you throw it uh yeah it kind of falls in amongst some of the um uh, some of the, the the kind of shadowy performers and as the actor playing shatter shield pretends to go over a waterfall oh <laughs> kind of off just off stage uh the the orchestra reaches its final crescendo uh and everyone stands up and starts clapping uh and the curtain is about to come down when a sort of cloud of smoke starts and make sure to spotlight it perfectly mm. yes you swing a spotlight onto it like that in the middle of the, the stage from the, the point where the gem was. I feign surprise <laughs> there it is <laughs> real talent for this yeah and what I was born to play this part so Lilith what did you put in the centre of this thing I went back to our little friend who was in uh, like the the spinning top, and I asked her if she could help me play a trick. Thin, yeah, a little thin, and yeah. uh, so uh, I got. So she's she's out. So in the middle of this huge theatre, is this very kind of creepy child? And I've said, do do your best, like spooky voice. Um, and yeah, I've promised her lots of fun because she's been living out at the toy museum. So I've promised her a fun extra day. Um, have you doing things with her? Have you told her anything she should say? I've asked her um, to say, "Will you play with my hobby horse? I want to play with the hobby horse. Will you?" Cool. Very nice. I pretend uh, yeah, to be out. extremely frightened by this and run off the stage. Yeah. Good. Out of the smoke uh, comes a sort of twisted form. It, it looks like kind of suspended child, but the head is just like. Upside down. 
<laughs> oh, she's uh, done a good job. <laughs> yeah, and she sort of floats over the centre of the audience and then with a kind of clack, 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 her head rotates the right way round and her mouth kind of yawns open and she goes, Will you play with my hobby horses? I want you to play with my hobby horses. Hobby horses. And then I set off all the pyro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Um, yeah, they're supposed to go off uh, at the end of the bows. Mm-hmm. But yeah, <laughs> glitter cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Up on the catwalk, Kazmir is now hammered. Uh, yeah. And I just want to pass the bottle to, to Zilla. Like, I hate the arts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, either. Everybody screams. Um, the place is in uproar. Everyone's like, all everyone's piling out, sprinting, trying to get away from this ghost, which is now kind of floating down towards the audience and like passing through them and like clawing at their faces and mouths and stuff. It, it's a horrible, unsettling spectacle. Clearly not part of the act, and everyone is running away except for all the security in the building who are running on stage towards the source of this smoke and are desperately searching on the ground Mm. for the point where they believe the gem should Mm. be but the gem is gone Gone. this sounds like the perfect time for an avalanche of ball bearings (laughs) (laughs) an avalanche of ball bearings yeah underneath all the security guards they're driven up they're falling (laughs) Uh, you have met the brief yeah. of loud <laughs> yeah. chaos and leaving your calling card and presumably at this point you just l- from your all different yeah. positions leg it for the exits mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to get my coat unfortunately I wouldn't no I wouldn't have thought so <laughs> uh, yeah and you uh, we will we will leave the gang uh, as they sprint out <laughs> and reconvene uh, and start making their way back to Eleanor's house, and I think that's where we will leave it for now. Amazing work! Hooray! Well done, Luke. That was great. Well done, everyone. Well done, everybody. Awesome. Um, yeah, we're now doing downtime mm-hmm. uh, at the start of episodes, so okay. we can do that now. As for heat and entanglements, um, looking at what this says here, uh, there is absolutely no way that you're not taking the ma- like the <laughs> maximum amount of heat. Yeah, everyone telling everyone their real names and giving them <laughs> direction to their house. And, oh, yeah. yeah, there was a lot of that, to be fair. Uh, I'm going to call this what the book calls wild, wild devastating, devastating exposure. exposure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's yeah. six, plus yeah. one for, for a high-profile target, plus one if the situation happened on hostile turf. Not hostile turf. No. Not hostile ne- turf, neutral, no. neutral turf. Plus one if you're at war with another faction. Was killing involved? No. 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 Nearly. Nearly, yeah. <laughs> Sean C. barely got away with his life. As the reviews will say the next day, the only murder was of the marriage of Lady Fienge. The only one who killed it was old Barrel Bill. Or yeah, yeah, Barrel Bill, <laughs> the standout <laughs> star. Stand of the gen- yeah, yeah. Drab, drab offering elevated by bold new role. <laughs> <laughs> Or, P.S., a ghost came out. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent special effects. Yeah, so um, that's going to be seven heat. Out of nine. Good stuff. I'll very, very quickly roll an entanglement. Plus six. All right, here we go. Your wanted level is one from before. So I'm going to roll one dice. That is a five. Demonic notice or show of force. Lilith, uh, your use of Finn Mm -hmm. um, is going to draw some bad ghosts to you. Okay, great. Cool. (laughs) It's fine. So we'll we'll see how that plays out later. But um, (laughs) great. But yeah, you've made. Well, well, I'd assume. (laughs) Yeah, the gang has made like a big noise in the crime world of Volisport. You have made a big noise in the ghost world of Volisport. (sighs) And that's that. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this, then there's uh, then there's Watch Ox Venture where we play D and D. Johnny, where can people find you? YouTube.com forward slash Johnny Kierdini. Check that out. And if you enjoyed this, then why not become a member of the OX Supporters Club by going to patreoncom slash OX Club. You can join a Discord. There's an Ox Venture uh, uh, sort of channel in there where you can chat about Ox Venture and say uh, and share your fan art of 
Barnaby delivering his final aria. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait uh, to see it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.